the discussion. And this has to do, obviously, with the Triple C uh, recalls high court judgment that's come through. And this is a big issue. A lot of spaces are being held with regards to this issue. And Professor Jonathan Moy has spoken about it, has not just uh, posted about it, but I've heard him speak on the issue. I've heard him uh, say a number of things which people uh, felt were very uncomfortable or they did not want to hear. But uh, today, here we are. We've had many people, including uh, Senator Monzoro, who've also spoken on these uh, issues to do with the Triple C recalls, the Chabangu saga, as I, I, I call it. Um, and here we are, where now we have a version which has come through and I know for a fact uh, he told me uh, earlier that he's had to read through the 28 page uh, document uh, so thank you so much professor for that and uh, so not wasting too much time um, please go ahead welcome professor welcome I hope you've uh, managed to rest a bit <laughs> but thank you for joining um, it's uh, my pleasure uh, Salani good afternoon to you and um, good afternoon to uh, the rest of the colleagues who are on the platform. Um, my uh, apology that um, I could not uh, uh, avail myself earlier um, for the reasons I explained to you. Um, and, and we just finished what we were doing uh, about uh, just an hour or so ago and then I had to uh, find junk food to eat, we, we, and, and, and here I am. Uh, it is my pleasure to be uh, for, uh, uh, to be here to, well, maybe not just present, uh, uh, as you were suggesting, but as is, is the custom uh, on this uh, increasingly a important platform. Uh, it is becoming a platform of record, uh, I think, precisely because it's a discussion platform to exchange views, ideas uh, about the state of our country as and when things unfold. In this uh, particular case, uh, we have... Uh, I'm not sure we should say in front of us or behind of us a landmark decision uh, in the case of uh, the members of parliament of Triple uh, C Chamisa who were recalled on the 3rd and uh, 4th of October respectively. Uh, and, and by members of parliament, we mean uh, some uh, who are in the lower house, the National Assembly, and others in the upper house, the, the Senate. So, in fact, uh, as we, we know, uh, this uh, judgment involved uh, two cases, two applications which were consolidated. One affected uh, the, the the lower house members, the other the Senate members. Uh, and because this is a a, a a discussion platform, yes, we all anticipated at least the decision, um, which way it was going to go. I think since we were advised uh, the last uh, last night yesterday uh, i don't think we knew or anyone knew which, which which way it was going to go um i've seen some ludicrous uh, suggestions that there may be some people who knew even a uh, way back uh, some people are clutching at straws and finding some footnotes and saying, oh, but if this footnote says 23 October and they're using this footnote, it means that um, they, they knew or well, started writing the judgment even then and so forth. But uh, the fair thing to say is we went to bed, maybe some of us with their shoes on, 
uh, not 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 sure except uh, what I think is very significant for a change because we are not accustomed to this is the fact that we were exposed to the case uh, of course some of us had read the papers meaning the founding affidavits the opposing affidavit then the heads of argument we read those uh, as they were filed in advance of the hearing uh, on the uh, fourth or rather the hearing was not on the fourth the hearing was on the second uh, uh, and the the important a backdrop that I think as we discuss the judgment today, uh, the, the, the important backdrop is that for once, and thanks to the you know, Tech Magazine TV, we followed the oral uh, evidence and the hearing, therefore, uh, uh, and 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 uh, we had some solid base, I would say, uh, to anticipate, uh, to, to, to uh, make sense uh, of, of uh, what was uh, said by the legal representatives, the advocates, uh, and to a very considerable extent, I would say reasonable people had for themselves how the case of the applicants uh, uh, started uh, experiencing difficulties which increasingly became or took the appearance of insurmountable difficulties. Um, and, and, and I think as we discuss the judgment, the areas, some of the areas which uh, we noticed or had on, on the second, in fact, as, 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 as areas of immense difficulty, uh, in fact, have been confirmed by the, by the, by the judgment. There are a number of things to say. Um, I'm, I'm in fact tempted to, to, to take a pause before I delve in, in, into uh, what, what I, I, I would like to, to share with you. Um, uh, did, uh, what, uh, what can you give me the, the terms of engagement, including time and, and so forth and so forth, so that uh, I, I, I stay within the expectations. Of course, uh, uh, Professor, no, not a problem at all. Uh, basically, uh, please feel free. Um, you know, you're always at home here on Citizen Speak Out, and we were waiting for you uh, to, to come through. So I'm actually more concerned with the time that you have for us today. If I could uh, get an idea of uh, how long you, you can spare um, to contribute on the space, I think that would be the best way to go, because I know you've had a, a long day so far. Okay, thank you. I'm indebted. Um, uh, based on um, uh, my, my, my last uh, engagement with the general chat a few days ago, and more specifically with previous engagements here, uh, I, 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 I'm happy to stick around for about three hours. Beyond that, I'm sure I, I will have uh, run out of gasoline, but at least around three hours or so maximum. Uh, if we uh, get done uh, earlier, that's, that will be great. 
Absolutely. Um, so my co-hosts, uh, you've heard that. Please help me. Uh, let's uh, uh, try to work with the three hours and uh, let's obviously understand that, uh, uh, you know, we, we need to respect our speakers as well. Uh, as some of us, and all that, uh, but uh, at the end of the day, we want to make sure that we obviously give a, the opportunity to our guest speaker. To, to contribute for there to be questions that are asked absolutely but respectfully like we always do and I, I guess uh, to get the ball starting um, uh, you know it's uh, when I look at everything that's been going on uh, professor I have to say this is not surprising to me this is the honest truth I'm not surprised with the verdict uh, I'll, I'll explain why I'm not surprised um, I've always, and on Citizen Speak Out, we've always discussed this. Uh, they are they are those who uh, speak out bravely and they do get attacked. Uh, and I'm sure you know all about that, uh, especially if you do not ag uh, agree with uh, the those who believe uh, or support what is there currently. But I always felt that uh, from the beginning of the nomination process, that is where everything started within Triple C. The strategic ambiguity uh, is basically the downfall of Triple C. That's my humble opinion. Um, I'll, I'll obviously uh, make sure I'll make sure that uh, I'll give you reasons why I think so. Um, they, we, there were questions as to when the whole process of selecting your candidate was coming through. Uh, Fadzai Maere, the former uh, spokesperson of Triple C, made it clear that citizens would have a voice, uh, like the, the citizens will be part of it. They'll select their leaders. Now, I feel because they had said that openly, it now meant that they needed to devise a plan of where the citizens would come in. Now, people thought that it meant citizens will have the, the obvious say. And I always questioned, who are the citizens? Who's going to be part of this process? How are they going to hold it? And then we saw Berekamwana. And um, after seeing the Berekamwana issue that was coming through, we started to see uh, a lot of people that were coming through and said, but I won during the Berekamwana. I had more people that went behind me than the other person. Someone else became number four, number three, and, and so forth. Someone was like, oh, why am I not on the final list yet? I came first. And during the Berekamwana, they came through and said, even though you've won this uh, part or this stage, um, it doesn't mean that you are the overall winner. There are other stages that need to come through, that need to happen. And those stages were never apparent. They were never transparent to uh, uh, many people. Uh, we didn't see why someone who'd be uh, successful during Berekamwana would not, would not show up on the final list when they were being announced um, as the final people would uh, be representing Triple C. And I already felt that that was a big problem, not to mention... Uh, the results of the Berekamwana and the selection process took ages to come out. I mean, if I'm not mistaken, it took about two months or plus uh, for the results to come through on who had made it to the final cut. And even though the, it took that long, fair enough, they could have their reasons. But did they give ample time for people to come through with reservations or for people to appeal who felt uh, that uh, the process was not transparent and so forth. I feel they didn't because they announced on a Friday and the following Monday it was nomination court. So that was not enough, uh, enough ample time, in my humble opinion, for anyone who was disgruntled with the process or the uh, selection process to actually have a voice. And then uh, we see an issue during the nomination process where we have double candidates. So to me, that raised double flags. And um, Triple C kept on arguing and saying that uh, the double candidates that you see, and they made sure that they mentioned the names of people who were double candidates. I'm sure Freddie was one of those uh, who was mentioned there and a whole list of other people. And what Triple C in the name of well, Fadzai Mayere, basically on behalf of Triple C, mm -hmm. said that double candidates was not the fault of Triple C. It was the fault of Faz. Uh, it was the fault of ZANU-PF. They, I, I also find it very confusing why they at that point did not mention the issue of uh, Chabangu as well as a possible reason why um, the, the triple C, uh, you know, the double candidates were appearing. But nonetheless, they told us all that it was Faz, it was Zanu PF. So we move forward to the election cycle. Of course, uh, people were selected. We still had the double candidates uh, that came through. There were court, uh, so, um, you know, applications made though to remove the double candidates. Those were not successful. 
and we still had a double candidates. You went to the ballot uh, box, uh, you saw two or three triple C people in one area. So nonetheless, uh, people voted for who they wanted. And also as they were voting for who they wanted, it was primarily because triple C had already uh, started to say, uh, the double candidates are ZANU PF. These are not of our doing. Therefore, we are going to hold rallies. We're going to campaign. Uh, these are the people you need to vote for. And surely people voted for who they wanted. But they did not get rid of the problem internally, in my opinion, which was that there was disgruntlement. So I, I sorry to give you a long sort of uh, <laughs> uh, what you call it roundabout uh, uh, session there. But I just wanted to, uh, you to understand where I'm coming from. So looking at all of this. I feel Triple C should have dealt with this matter internally because it was an internal problem. But um, we have situations where Nelson Chamisa would come up and say, Chabangu, we don't know him. We don't this and that. It became an issue of we don't know this individual, it, uh, you know, and, and so forth. And I feel that's where a lot of the issues got lost. And, and they were also now blaming the Speaker of Parliament uh, and the President of Senate for all their kind of uh, uh, involvement in this. But uh, the courts actually said that, no, you need to apologize. These people are not the problem. Uh, the problem is uh, in your house. So, yes, strategic ambiguity, in my opinion, was a huge failure. And uh, that is why the judgment is always also showing this. Uh, that's what I can say, Professor. I mean, what's, what's your opinion with my sort of analysis? Uh, although it may lack certain uh, kind of je ne sais quoi, but I think I tried. <laughs> Go ahead, Professor. Thank you very much, uh, Salani. Um... Uh, you ask what do I think about your opinion. My answer is that uh, if we're going to have a meaningful conversation on this, uh, we should uh, first hold on to our opinions and unpack the judgment, uh, go through the judgment, highlighting key aspects and 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 uh, bring all of us to the same, uh, for want of a better word, level, but uh, same understanding. Uh, and then we express our opinions on the judgment. Uh, you, I, I, I understand where you're coming from. Uh, my comment on your, on your opinion is that I understand what you're saying. I've heard you say this before. Uh, I have no problem with what you are saying, except to correct one fact, where you said uh, the court intervened and um, asked the applicants to apologize. The court didn't do that. Um, and it would have not done that during the hearing. If the court wanted to take an uh, issue of that kind, it would have expressed it itself as it has in the judgment. Uh, the court just gave the applicants and the respondents an opportunity uh, to uh, present their oral arguments already knowing that they'd presented their written arguments. But it didn't ask them to apologize. Uh, as we will see when we go through the judgment, the applicant's uh, lawyer, advocate, Nzovu, uh, uh, apologized in reply when she realized that uh, the case of her clients was collapsing. Or, to be honest, when she realized it had collapsed, and, if, and, and she apologized, she offered to apologize to rescue the case. So the question that we were left with on... Uh, uh, on the on, on, on the on, on the second uh, was whether she had succeeded to rescue, and we, and we and so in anticipation of the judgment, uh, it was how, did she how far did she go to to rescue, and we, we can tell now that the judgment is with us that actually the court appreciated the her, her apology. She conducted herself exceedingly well professionally on behalf of her clients. 
and she succeeded to save them from punitive costs which were almost guaranteed. Uh, they were going to be slapped with punitive costs, uh, but uh, uh, the, the, the apology had to mean something. It was voluntary. It was not, from the, it was not a court-ordered apology. It was voluntary, um, ethical, uh, and, and professional uh, on, the, on, the, on the part of uh, the advocate. Uh, that's, all, that's what I would like to say about your opinion. Uh, I say this with respect. And then I want to take advantage of uh, you asking me what I think about uh, your opinion to say something that I already implied, that it is at this stage where we are less important to express our opinions, uh, but more important to understand the judgment uh, to get the facts, to be factual about the judgment. A lot of stuff is already being said out there, as often happens in, Zimbab in, in Zimbabwean public discourse. Uh, and most of what is, is being said is false. Uh, uh, and and um, uh, we should remind ourselves of, of the dictum that uh, everyone is entitled to their opinion, but no one is entitled to their own facts. Uh, and that if you want to have substantive, meaningful debate or discussion, at least strive to get to some uh, common understanding of what the facts are. And then let's argue about what those facts mean to us. Uh, as individuals, as society, as uh, communities, as political parties, and so forth. And it, it, it will be meaningful, and it would, I believe, mark a, a progressive point in the life of our country if we uh, debated and disagreed on facts. So uh, to that extent, or in that regard, with your indulgence, I, I, I propose uh, to quickly, uh, fully understanding uh, uh, that most of us have, 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 have seen and read the judgment. I, in fact, posted it myself, and I know others have been sharing it as well, just to, for colleagues to see it and so forth and read for themselves. I want to go through the, the judgment and what will be my opinion in this part of the discussion, uh, by and large, I mean, obviously, in, as I go uh, through it and mention certain facts, uh, you will pardon me if I comment on some of those facts. I was hoping to comment more and at large uh, in open discussion when people are asking me uh, any, a question for, to clarify anything. But I, I, I will not be able to resist the temptation to make some comments as I point out what is, in fact, not my opinion, but what is in the judgment. So, to begin with, and I think this is important to note, uh, when, when we, in, in the, you know, we are aware, and I'm going to emphasize uh, part of that, that really... Uh, the application was by uh, uh, the 15 uh, 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 members and, uh, of the National Assembly and seven of the Senate. Uh, and uh, the founding affidavit was by uh, Prince Tube Koswanda. Uh, who did for uh, the others, the 14 others. Um, so, and, and, and the application came first, so we saw it. Uh, for purposes of the judgment, we should note that um, uh, the application was in two parts. It, 
it had preliminary points and then which they call points in limine and then the the, the merits the, the main case uh, and there was quite some discussion around the preliminary points that were raised uh, and there was a feeling in some quarters that the the application or the case uh, will not go beyond the preliminary points that it would collapse on one or more of the preliminary points. However, it is notable, I think, and I, I'm, I, I haven't seen, and that doesn't mean no one has done this, but I haven't seen uh, anyone um, who, is, uh, who has taken note and raised the fact that uh, Chabangu, as the first respondent, raised four preliminary points. Uh, one of which was really um, pointed out and highlighted as a major, major one. But what is significant to note in the context of our discussion is that the court found against Chabang or dismissed all of Chabang's points in limine. So he, he lost all those arguments. Uh, he, he raised, for example, there were four. The first one was uh, raised... Uh, he raised uh, three in, on the papers and one, uh, okay, he raised three in his opposing affidavit and then one was raised by his, his advocate or his lawyer uh, uh, and it uh, appeared in the head of argument. And that one was to say that the High Court had no jurisdiction to hear the case. And the uh, reason for that argument was that this, this, the, the uh, applicants uh, were focusing, resting their case on the argument that the presiding officers of parliament uh, aired and acted un uh, unconstitutionally in accepting uh, the a letter that Mr. Chabang wrote uh, and sent to the lower house on the 3rd of October and sent to the, the Senate on the 4th. They, they, they should have noticed that the paper, the, the letters, according to the applicants, were not, not worth the paper they, they, they had been written on. Uh, because blah 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 blah, and so the the uh, the lawyers had argued uh, that uh, Chabang's lawyers that um, uh, in in uh, basically the applicants were saying Parliament uh, failed to fulfil its obligation to uh, 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 act in accordance with the constitution. And Chabang said, if that is the problem, then you are in the wrong court. You should go to the Constitutional Court because only the Constitutional Court can decide whether the Parliament or the President has uh, acted uh, ultra vast the Constitution. The, the court disagreed with, with the Chabang and said, no, this is properly before me, in my court. And um, you must distinguish between presiding officers of parliament and parliament. They are the presiding officers of parliament, meaning the speaker and the president of the Senate, are not parliament. They are not even part of parliament. Uh, a, a speaker can be someone from wherever who, who qualifies. And if a member of parliament is uh, recommended uh, and uh, then appointed, uh, uh, elected speaker, they vacate their constituency. So they are not members of parliament, they don't vote and so forth. But uh, parliament is when members of parliament uh, uh, take decisions, a vote by a committee of parliament or the house, full house. And when you say parliament, it should not be just the National Assembly or one house, the lower house, or uh, the upper house, Senate. It should be both. So this case it did not involve parliament at all. It just involved presiding officers. 
And I thought that was an important issue because it, 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 it clarifies a, a, a confusion, a common confusion. So the court was helpful, uh, provided uh, uh, educational content there. That because the speaker has said that, uh, Senator, I mean, sorry, President of Senate has said this, uh, we should not conclude that therefore Parliament has spoken. They speak as pres presiding officers. But this, the second one, which the court rejected, and which some people, uh, uh, some baiting guys, uh, put their money and uh, chickens and got uh, that the, the applicants were not going to succeed, was uh, that the uh, applicants uh, had failed uh, to join uh, C their party, CCC, to the proceedings. So there was the non joinder question. And we had this a lot in the discussions in the run up to the, to the case, uh, raised as a, prelim a preliminary point to say the application was fatal because of uh, the non joinder. But the court said, uh, you know, uh, if, if, uh, the, the, if you. Uh, the, the failure to join uh, or the non-joinder, to be more specific, uh, is not fatal to the ap uh, application um, just because Chavango alleged that the applicants uh, would not prove their allegations without making CCC a part to the proceedings was not fatal because uh, their failure to prove would not bring the application into the realm of the kind of cases that are considered a, a, a fatally flawed if there's a non-joinder where a, a joinder is necessary. Here, the court felt that it could in fact decide this case without the party. Uh, being joined, and so it dismissed it. And I think this is uh, an interesting talking point because a lot of energies and uh, arguments were put behind the non-joinder question, but it did not stand, it collapsed. There, there was a, a, a third objection or preliminary point raised by Chavango that uh, although the applicants were seeking a declarator, uh, in point of fact, they argued their application was some kind of a, a disguised review application. This is partly, I guess, because they were taking the presiding officers as uh, judicial officers who had made a certain decision that they thought was outrageous and they, were, they wanted it reviewed. But uh, using, uh, uh, interestingly, the recent case of uh, uh, Mangwana versus uh, Kasukwere, the, uh, uh, the, the, the court rejected uh, uh, that view that uh, uh, it, it is uh, not a sustainable uh, one. Uh, and uh, in the court's view, it was not, the application by the recalled MPs, CCC MPs, was not a disguised review. Then the last one was that uh, Chabango argued that there was a, a dispute of facts uh, which could not be settled on the papers. Uh, that is, could not be settled, say, uh, resolved by the court uh, going by the application that it needed uh, evidence and so forth and maybe they should have proceeded by summons. Um, the, uh, so to them, uh, to, to Chabang, the, the, the application that we saw and we were discussing and debating before it was had was incapable of being resolved by the court on the papers. Uh, and to that extent, he wanted the application to be dismissed but the court disagreed with him and said, in fact, uh, it, it wasn't so. 
it would be able to resolve the case uh, on the papers. And, 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 and that's, that's what, um, as we are sitting here, uh, we know happened that the court re has resolved this on the papers. So that so it's important. Uh, I, I you know if I was running a newspaper or some uh, digital uh, uh, kind of uh, in, you know news platform, I would have just flashed breaking news. Tabang was a preliminary. Uh, points or points in limine uh, collapse or something, some dramatic thing like that. Uh, you know, it's like because these 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 things come up front as you had when we were listening to the stream, the live live stream. They come first and do, uh, 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 we had them being raised. Now, when you read the judgment, you you, you take the judgment you. We haven't gone to the end. There, where the the, the the final decision is given after the court's disposition, Chabang loses point one, loses point two, loses point three, loses point four. So, oh my God, hasn't this case collapsed? You know what? I don't know whether it's only me who saw this. But I did see some WhatsApp group claiming that uh, the recalled MPs had won this case. And I wondered, was it because they read these uh, points in Limna and they could see Chabang was losing them and then decided to throw the thing away? Or what they were, I don't know whether, maybe it was some other propaganda thing. But, but there you are. Now, the you know Chabang was the first respondent in in both cases. In the case of uh, the lower house, he was first respondent and then uh, uh, we had um, uh, uh, it, uh, the speaker and the, uh, the president of Senate sec second and third. In the other case that involved the senators, uh, the uh, third respondent was uh, the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission, but it, it was not cited in this other first case. So the presiding officers also had uh, points in limine. Uh, that is, uh, the Speaker, the President of Senate, and the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission. Uh, the, the presiding officers of parliament said that um, uh, the applicants it, uh, were misguided in, 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 in joining them because they had not shown uh, uh, there, there was no cause of action against them. And that the relief that uh, the applicants were seeking against the presiding officers of parliament uh, was incompetent. Uh, and they said this was for the reason that um, uh, the positions or the seats uh, uh, that the, uh, were held by the applicants before they were recalled became vacant by operation of law and not by or because of anything that they had done. Uh, and they, they had done nothing they said, because their role as presiding officers of parliament uh, has been made clear in previous uh, cases of this kind. There have been so many recalls before, which have clarified that. And, uh, and in their view, something that cannot be disputed in their view, that their functions or role in processing recalls is not a judicial function. Uh, they are just uh, confined by the law, by the constitution, to facilitate notification uh, to the houses, to the lower house, national assembly, and to to the senate. Notify that 
uh, so and so is no longer a member, what, what, and the call, and then to notify uh, the president and, uh, uh, I mean, to, to notify Zek of, of, of the vacancy so that they in turn notify the president. Now, uh, like we, we, we said, and this is a very important thing that really I, I think should be a, 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 a point of discussion and 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 um uh, i um uh, my my might have to deal with it uh now uh although i'd plan to deal with it later <clears throat> and this is the point that when 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 the presiding officers uh, raised these points in limine, uh, as you had during the uh, oral hearing, uh, it prompted uh, the applicants to withdraw. And we have to be careful to understand what they said and what we heard them say they were withdrawing versus what we think or imagine, because there have been a lot of uh, misinformation and uh, misleading stuff in, uh, to the public on this point. Uh, but it is common cause, though, uh, and everybody has been talking about it, that the applicants considered their mistake, uh, that uh, they agreed with the uh, the uh, the presiding officers and Zek and Zek said we, you know we don't do anything you know we just uh, we, we, uh, we follow the constitution we make no decision if there's a vacancy we notify the president and it's the president who then sets a, a, a by election so the applicants admitted that they had no case against the presiding officers this we should highlight they said atina nyaya and yet, but they said this by word of mouth. After the respondents had presented, but by word of uh, 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 what is word of pen and paper? By word of pen and paper, they made mountains and mountains of pages, paragraphs. Uh, making the case stand or fall on their on the allegations they made against the presiding officers, not against Chabang, but against the speaker and the president of of Senate, and uh, to some small extent, uh, but notable against the uh, the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission. So they are admitted by word of mouth, uh, and having admitted that they had no case against the pre presiding officers, they then confessed the incompetence of the relief that they were seeking against them. And 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 this is this is important uh, to note um, because it, 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 it in my uh, opinion. Uh, makes clear uh, why the case collapsed uh, and, 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 and why if they, and I'm expressing an opinion here, not a fact, uh, but I'm expressing a, an opinion based on this fact of the with, withdrawal, that if they appeal, uh, their chance of uh, succeeding on appeal will be between small and none. And since they have to appeal sooner rather than later, the talk out there is that um, um, uh, it, it, it's, it's, it's not, uh, it, it doesn't require speculation that they would, uh, they would have a, a chance in hell or a chance in heaven. They have no chance uh, of succeeding uh, 
um, a, 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 on appeal. But the important point I want to emphasize here is that you should look at, you see, uh, uh, it sometimes sounds tedious, but you should look at what they were praying for, what their relief or the order they were seeking to get from the court. So see, they had two applications. In one application, um, which was uh, the one filed by Dubeko, Svanda, and others, they one wanted uh, the, the uh, application, their application to succeed with cost on an attorney client scale. And then two, uh, they wanted uh, it declared that uh, the first respondent, meaning Chavangu, had no right or authority to write the letters that he wrote, the two letters on the third and fourth, uh, to the second respondent uh, from, uh, from the National Assembly, and that it also be declared that the recall of the applicants, their recall from the National Assembly uh, by the respondents was illegal, null and void, and therefore of no force and effect. Four, they wanted uh, the uh, them, themselves as applicants to be deemed to be still members of parliament who were duly elected as gazetted uh, on, on that day uh, in, in uh, September or August, rather. Uh, and then, importantly, on uh, their, their fifth uh, uh, prayer was that the respondents and all those acting, claiming or acting through them or on their behalf be and are hereby in interdicted from interfering with the applicant's duties as MPs. So they were, they were now that they were covering uh, the presiding officers of parliament. And then six, they were saying the first respondent, that is Chavang, uh, should be interdicted from carrying out any further recalls. They were saying, stop there and there, no more. Uh, don't try again. And then seven, very important, they were saying the second respondent be interdicted and restrained from acting on any correspondence purporting to be on behalf of uh, C uh, other than correspondence that uh, comes from the party's designated official for that purpose, which they claimed is the leader, Nelson Chamisa. So this was affecting the, the se second respondent. Uh, that's the first uh, order in the first case. In the second case, they were doing the same thing with the first uh, uh, po uh, um, prayer, uh, dismissed with cost. Uh, the second prayer, they were same. The uh, Chabang had no right or authority to write what he, uh, he wrote. Uh, three that uh, there be uh, uh, it be declared that uh, that the letter that uh, Chabang wrote uh, was not a valid letter and that uh, second responded uh, 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 advising second respondent uh, uh, to do what he did under the claim that um, these members had ceased to be uh, the triple C MPs had ceased to be members of triple C. And then fourth and very important, uh, they, they were saying uh, it be declared that the purported recall of the applicants from parliament by the respondents was illegal and so forth. Now, what happened? It's in, in, uh, at the uh, um, uh, during the a um, hearing at the hearing, the attorney or advocate 
e, miss, uh, miss in love considered that the reliefs that I've read, though especially uh, the two, five and seven in the first order, and four in, uh, in the second order that they were praying for, they considered that those prayers were untenable. And uh, Ms. Nlov then indicated that she was withdrawing and we should underscore. She said, and now it is coming, is, 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 uh, this is the final word, because it's, it's not uh, me saying this, it's now the judge who says uh, in his right, he writes in the, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the judgment that Mrs. Nlov indicated that she was withdrawing every, every, not some, every aspect of the draft order which had a bearing on the presiding officers or the third respondent. And the judge goes on further to say, Ms. Love emphasized that the applicants were seeking orders against the first respondent only. They were now seeking relief only from Chavang. And then the judge said the, that the submission of, 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 of Ms. Love, in essence, meant that paragraphs five and seven, I was uh, uh, highlighting when I was going through the, the orders of the draft order in the first application became redundant, says the judge. It equally meant that paragraph four in the second draft order, which was similarly worded to, to uh, place uh, 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 blame on the presiding officers and responsibility that uh, to require uh, them to be interdicted, that it, that paragraph four of the draft order in the second application would be amended by the deletion of respondents and its substitution with first respondent. So you remove them and you put Chavang where you had put them. And that, therefore, paragraph six would completely fall off. Why is this important? I think it's important because, I, and, and I, I, I can't avoid saying this, I must say it, and I don't say it for any personal reason. I say it for the reason I said in the beginning of this uh, discussion that no one is entitled to their own facts. This is a no-brainer, but it's an important no-brainer in public debate because we get people who demonize others for stating a fact as if those people are responsible for, for the fact. Then we have other people who, by virtue of their political affiliation, by virtue of their profession, they have these, uh, they make themselves self-appointed authorities. That when they speak, will say, ah, since they were doing, chero chano taura ichokwadi. Ah, since he greater eduiri, which, which has become a cancerous development in Zimbabwe, that only certain people can tell the truth, everyone else, by virtue of their political affiliation, are liars. They, they, they lie by definition. These other angels uh, uh, tell the truth by definition. So what did we have, and why am I commenting like this? Uh, following the hearing, um, the day before yesterday, uh, my good friend, and he is my good friend, and he knows I think we are good friends. I, 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 I have uh, lots of time for him, but I disagree with him, and he caused damage. And in my view, he was doing it for the second time, because um, another time, uh, something uh, of a comparable nature happened when people, uh, after the a hearing of the Wulawayo 12 MPs, a, a lie was uh, propagated by lawyers saying that uh, Justice Nlovu, 
who had heard that matter in the High Court in Bulawayo was a brother to Richard Ndrovu, a member of the ZANU-PF Politburo, which, which was outrageous, a lie. And you know, they just damaged those two Ndrovus, declared them relatives when they are not, created an impression that is outrageous, uh, that look at uh, what this political party is doing. If you are going to criticize the political party, especially the ruling party, please, by all means, do it. And it is important to do that because those who govern must be held accountable. But you cannot hold accountable anyone through lies. You know, you must tell the truth. So what was the lie here? Um, uh, for reasons that I don't understand, uh, uh, Advocate Tawani Mpofu uh, tweeted that uh, it was a lie to say uh, uh, the uh, lawyers of the applicants had withdrawn uh, the um, uh, prayers or relief they sought from the presiding officers of parliament. And he said the correct position is that a declarator bearing on the illegality of Mdenda's actions has been maintained and is still being sought. What was withdrawn, he said, is the interdictory relief sought in paragraph five, and he attached uh, uh, that paragraph, um, uh, uh, which he said is paragraph five. But if you look at the paragraph he attaches, it's not the same as the uh, two paragraphs uh, that have been uh, um, um, uh, 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 included in the judgment by the by by Justice uh, Mteveza. and then he said applicants maintain that Mudenda conducted himself illegally, and that is still there. That tweet is still there, and this tweet is coming from a highly respected uh, uh, advocate. I really uh, 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 get like uh, I feel pain. Uh, not even uh, mind pain, you know, I, I, I feel body pain when professional people deliberately lie or mislead others uh, over something that is in the public domain, something that we all had had. The withdrawal was not on the papers. Those guys had a chance to withdraw when they did their answering affidavit because they saw the responses in the opposing papers from Chabangu as first respondent and from the presiding officers of parliament as second, as second and third respondent, in the, as the case uh, may be. They saw, they read, and they came up with a, a long, the boss answering affidavit, which was going all over the place. Uh, but not uh, dealing with the mischief that um, they had invited upon themselves. They were, instead of apologizing and withdrawing, they were adding salt to the wound, to injury. That was one problem. Problem number two, they came to court to make oral arguments because they are the applicants, they went first. And further pressure. As if they are not aware that the but it's a true gita, as you know, uh, as an amsoro. They just went on, went on, went on, uh, standing by what they said in the, in their papers and sat down. Then the court gave the uh, uh, the, the respondents the opportunity, and uh, uh, it was now the oral presentations of both the first respondent uh, advocate and the second uh, uh, and the presiding officers of parliament as uh, lawyers. After those spoke, uh, in reply to what those had said, that's when the lawyers of uh, Triple C uh, people uh, started uh, uh, making corrections, uh, I mean, I mean uh, conceding uh, and withdrawing. Not withdrawing one thing here, another there that they said about the presiding officers. They withdrew everything, as the judgment is saying now. 
But we didn't need to wait for this judgment to see or know that they withdrew everything. Everything, namely, in the draft orders, the two draft orders. They drew everything that uh, related to them. Every averment that they had made impeaching the presiding officers of parliament, they withdrew. Sabe is one in the visit to be withdrawal. As Cheluanga, we hid ourselves, you know, only to be surprised when uh, those whose uh, legal opinion we follow started telling us, I know they didn't withdraw everything, they still maintain their impeachment of the legality of uh, the conduct of the speaker, what, what. But now we have the, 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 uh, uh, the, the judgment helpfully uh, making clear that they, they, they indeed withdraw. But as you, as you saw, uh, or first as you heard that day, uh, and as, as uh, I'm sure you read uh, in, the, in the judgment, um, the withdrawal was in total. Complete, they withdrew. Now, what what did that mean? Honestly, as you saw, if you go uh, and say, ah, can I, can, can first respondent, uh, can, can impose that, can uh, tortoise uh, on a lamp post, I can basa, uh, but the basa kuna speaker, uh, senate, uh, I mean, president, senate, and get a garage pass, and then you find out yourself, and uh, not, not because the court has said, hey, are you sure? Yourself, you find out, oh, my God, my God, my God. As you listen to the, then you stand up and say, I'm withdrawing everything that uh, 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 I, I, I had put uh, asking of the relief I had sought from this year. If you are a reasonable person listening to that, during oral presentation, and you are a reasonable person reading that in the judgment. And you have assessed that those guys had put their case in that basket. But Vavu Visa Zesu basket. If you are a reasonable person who then still continues to think, Pachine Chance Yaku in a Panapa. You, you, you deserve disqualification from the group of reasonable people. It's unreasonable. You don't even need a judge to tell you to teach you to kapa. Iwewe pachako kana urimu kwana. And you are told that kesi yanga yanzi vaga kanga nisa kwazo kwazo ndeyava. My presiding officers have a speaker with you. Na ningi na president we senate wakatambira tamba isina ne basa rese coming from a, a tortoise on a lamp lamp post ndio wakakanganisa and tonyora ipapo tonyora kurati zoto wakanganisa se and then was on zoto ah maira saka shama tiruguta ura take up and the judge is not telling you but your lawyer send up say tago visa basket here. if you continue hoping that you will win you have a problem but if you hear that and then you wait, still thinking you will win, and the judgment comes and you are told to go to, you have lost, and what? I, I, I knew. There's a politics. Is. Because I'm not paying as in this anyways. Then you are mad. Really, it's, it's not that you are irrational, it's that you are mad. And, and you are a danger to the development of uh, a responsible, good society. Because honestly, you, what is it? So your definition of uh, winning and losing is, depends on the winner or the loser. If you are winning, then everything is rational. You know? Even when you yourself, you had your lawyer surrendering effectively. And then you read in the judgment, could, because... Uh, so I don't know, and I, 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 I proffer this with the greatest of respect to say, in any honestly, you know, 
uh, especially uh, we are on uh, these spaces here, and I think it's people from across some some of uh, uh, our compatriots who are listening are in Zimbabwe, some uh, in the dungeon, others uh, in, in the UK, in America, what what. Those of you who are in these other jurisdictions, honestly, you know that when litigants withdraw, you don't say uh, uh, of a litigant who has withdrawn my submissions, this is a pattern of, you know, wah, 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 capture, you know, no. Is there capture in these things? Sure. We've seen capture, state capture cost billions and billions to investigate uh, under the Justice Zondo Commission in South Africa. It's a problem. But uh, you don't see that problem where it is not. You, you become dishonest to cover up your own incompetence. Wahuti is state capture when in fact usina kuwiani argument yagazar, yakakwana. So this is what is uh, this is uh, uh, what it means uh, in 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 one respect. In the other respect, still on this point, which was really uh, and I, I think I intimated uh, on this earlier. Um, in 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 addition to making what ended up being unsustainable impeachment attempts or, or, or of the presiding officers of parliament, the Founding affidavit of the applicants and the answering affidavit was full of slave, unbelievable. Uh, and and uh, 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 you know, uh, first of all, they attacked people who were not before the court, in particular ZANU-PF, ZANU uh, which is a legal, I mean, a person who can be sued and it can, it can sue. If they really believed what they were saying about ZANU-PF in their papers, they know that the, le the correct legal thing to do is to bring that person. If you think you are in jeopardy or in quandary or in some state of misery due to whoever, and you are, you are going to a court of law, you must bring to court that whoever and say, you know what? I'm in this big mess because of this person. That's why I brought this person as respondent number X. And here is my evidence against that person, uh, uh, which makes me uh, say what I'm saying. Uh, you know... Uh, you don't have to be a lawyer to know that what is uh, an allegation made in an affidavit is actually supposed to be a statement of fact. Because the whole purpose of an, of an affidavit is to state the facts and to let the facts speak for themselves, to enable the lawyers to apply the law to the facts. So even though it's like you are alleging in your pleading, in fact, you are, it's, that's supposed to be a statement of fact. But if you take the word allegation uh, uh, literally and you say, let, uh, let me have a festival of allegations against these guys, Navao Ananas, Uyu Uyu is a, a, a tortoise on a lamppost and an imposter, Atumwane Zanu PF, to go, come and uh, cause this rubbish and nonsense yeah, to get us out. And uh, instead of getting a better tortoise, well, we are in a village, I know, a man who could be. And I saw some outrageous thing, by the way, by the guy who wrote the founding affidavit, Tobago Svanda, when we showed them in a, a, a debate, you, you know, but. Uh, his address of service is your office. Why are you using the, your office as his address of service? Musinga Muziwe. And then uh, the, uh, 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 Swanda says, he gave us that address. How can someone give you an address? Kutumunyore Masamons. 
on what is the legal uh, procedure here? And why do these people, and then I think these lawyers who are in triple C really need to start becoming serious. They are not the first opposition politicians in Zimbabwe who are lawyers. We have heard since in, in, in the struggle, Herbert Strepo was an illustrious lawyer. But uh, they, they left a tradition, you know, who was uh, uh, kidnapped and disappeared permanently during the struggle. I mean, actually, the liberation struggle is, 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 is littered with the service of compatriots who were illit uh, illustrious. They were not childish like what we see. You get a guy who is a, a lawmaker who has been in parliament, God knows for how many years, and now he has, uh, he has become a lawyer saying we use the address here, service here, office here, because Chabangu in his criminal act, Agatipa address here. What foolish audiences do they think are out there to hear such things and consume such things? Why are we being subjected to this? But these are not our results. With the, you know, and then they say, well, the judge is saying, if you are going to uh, do that, then act properly. And in the judge's words, he says, the applicant's attack on the political party called ZANU PF is, appears completely offside. In reality, it smacks of cowardice and uncalled for grandstanding. Allegations can only be made against a party who is before the court. In legal parlance, an allegation refers to a claim of fact not yet proven to be true. It is not synonymous with an insult. The principles of natural justice require a party <clears throat> against whom a decision adverse to his, her, or its interests to be heard before such a decision is made. I cannot, in this instance, make a finding that ZANU-PF connived with the pres presiding officers without hearing its side of the story. And that's why and, uh, uh, and I end that comment, uh, court, I, I was reading directly from the judgment. But that's why then the judge proceeded to commend uh, Advocate Nlovo that at the hearing, uh, she unreservedly apologized to both the court and the respondents for the use of the over-the-top language. I think this is important because this is happening in a court of law where there are rules. What is happening in spaces like this and others is worse, is unspeakable. And then you say, but you know, I, 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 you know, I genuinely believe that if you say you are the only authentic alternative in the country, it behooves you to demonstrate beyond reasonable doubt that you are such an alternative in word and deed. Murugdarum took a one and so forth. Dimaga inventor slogan, you know, to my tiro, chinja, chinja, my tiro. Sakamudo to one, I change my tiro and become like you, just insulting people to the point of insulting people in a court of law. Do my tiro at you. I think it's problematic, but it is good that they had a. Uh, uh, my, uh, uh, my advocates, uh, respectable uh, advocates, um, who had a second thought, uh, even if uh, 
it was on the spare of the moment and uh, uh, not only withdrew those uh, 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 prayers as we just highlighted a little while ago but they also withdrew the uh, the, the insults and apologized profusely and we see in the judgment that this conduct this commendable conduct uh, is uh, has had an impact on the judgment with the judge uh, slowing down the uh, the cost otherwise let's go back to the to the case with this having happened uh, what what did the applicants now now say uh, having withdrawn uh, and 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 having noted the judge's comments in fact i should add by the way uh, after uh, 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 the judge didn't only comment on the bad com uh, uh, language used against his unpf which i highlighted to some considerable exp expense uh, uh, extent. Um, for the sake of complete, completeness, I think I should point out that the judge said the the application, because it, the application was largely, if not entirely, focused on and uh, dealing with the actions that they were impugning of the presiding officers of parliament. Uh, the judge said, you know, the application was Teeming, he used the word teamed, teamed with resentment and rage, he said. And he said it employed profanities. And he described the profanities it and employed in relation to its, its description of uh, uh, Speaker Mdenda and uh, Senate President uh, Chinomona. Uh, he said the profanities were nauseating, you know. Um, it's not, this was no longer about ZANU-PF, it was not about the Speaker and the President of Senate. Um, and he, he really hammered them, uh, you know. Um, but now we, uh, we uh, move on to the essence of uh, what remained uh, was uh, this, that the applicant's argument that was maintained was that, one, it was now about the first respondent. He's not a member of, of the CC party, they said. He's not an interim secretary general of CCC. There is no secretary general or interim secretary general of CC, and that uh, is applicant none of them had ceased uh, to be a, a, a member uh, of parliament, of either the lower house or the uh, upper house. That's what they said, and those are the things that uh, remained. Now, so that's what they said about Chabang, the applicants. So what did the court say about Chabang? It said the following. It noted that he denied that his letter was fraudulent. He said none of the applicants had the power or right to challenge his authority, as only the party could do that. And he said the applicants are not the party. And he said neither Triple C nor its leader, Nelson Chamisa, was a party to the case, to the proceedings. He then raised the concern about the insults that had been chosen by the applicants um, against him. And, and they noted that these were also extended to other, I mean, he noted that these were extended to the other re re respondents. He further denied that the presiding officers of parliament had acted illegally because he, as a triple C in interim secretary general, had written to them to act in terms of the law. 
and he uh, maintained that in that capacity, he is empowered to deal with the administrative issues of CCC uh, party. And he said that the administrative issues include the recall of parliamentarians who would have ceased to be members of the party. And he said in his view, the court could not, in, de in determining the application before it, decide uh, the question whether or not the applicants had stopped being members of CCC or CCC at the time of their recall from parliament because the law provided them with separate remedies if they wished to challenge the cessation of their membership. They, uh, and, 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 and the argument there being that uh, if they wanted, because it was uh, the argument before the court was this is the, uh, the party doing this and is acting on behalf of the party, if they, if they wanted to challenge the party, they would they know what to do. So the, then the court noted that what sticks uh, uh, or stands out in um, uh, Chavangu's uh, letters. And remember, these are the two letters, the one that was written on the 3rd of October to the Speaker of Parliament, and then the other that was written on the 4th of October to the President of Senate. The judge says, what stands out about the, uh, those Chavangu letters to the presiding officers of parliament is that it satisfied, the court finds that it satisfied all the requirements under section 129 subsection 1K of the constitution. That's what it says, the court says. And then it further says, in addition, uh, Chabang attached annexures S2, ST2, which uh, consisted of a document addressed to the third respondent, which showed that he was designated by the CCC or Triple C as its of, excuse me, as its officer. And significant, the judge then says there is nothing to rebut that other than the belated end. The judge says discredited letters of Nelson Chamisa. And then the judge says, the first respondent, namely Chabangu, went out of his way to prove that what he ordinarily uh, would, uh, 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 was not required of him to prove. He went out of his way he, to try and, and prove what he ordinarily was not required to, to prove. This is the court's finding. And then the court, still on Chabangu, says the applicants failed to produce their party constitution or any document which showed that Chabangu, the court doesn't call him Chabangu, it calls him first respondent, it's me calling him Chabangu, could possibly not have held the position that he claimed he held. So if you say, ah, we are I was a secretary general, we do, ah, we are interim central secretary general, you don't say Zwakwana, see you later, or bye. You must prove or
let's put it this way, you must give the facts available to you. which make you reach that conclusion. Because Chabang should do not respond to your bare deniers or rather allegations, bald. There's no need to respond to nothing. Ogaunza nothing, neni dino zikarira, ndogo tarisa kutu. Ah, tamba yoyo, yo, to toto na kutu, ino kusisa kupu. But if you are saying you are not this, Yes, it's a negative and it's usually a tough thing to prove a negative, but you must attach facts. And the court says the applicants failed to produce their party constitution. Ukata Atina Secretary General or Interim Secretary General. Zunoneta Ereguti Ndirugudaro Nemakayed E Constitution. Tarisa, you won't find what that guy is talking about. Now I have I read uh, on on spaces the other time I was listening to a general chat and somebody was saying ah oh, uh, this court is terrible the judge you know why to be fair the court should have demanded that Chabangu puts evidence to prove that he is the interim secretary general he would have done that had those put the facts. Because the position is he uh, who alleges must prove their allegation to prompt the one about whom they are making the allegation to respond with the facts. To say, uh, you know, in fact, not only to respond with facts, because you need to put facts to say, I will see each or it is. Can we have respond? Ano vanira kunza better facts. To say ah, so ako sa ruta ora wote ma facts. This is uh, uh, worse than uh, an early Sunday picnic. Abana sa ruta ora. Chaiso chaiso the is. But we can say anything. It is the case, the legal procedure that are uh, nini I I just fold my arms and look at you. I'm not going to say anything. You know you. If they'd put a constitution, Chabang would have said to say, yes, this is the same constitution, if it is the same, but they are misreading this or misreading that. Or he would have said, Varukunyepa, this constitution is a fraudulent constitution. Chayo, chayo, ndeyi. Like I say, it's a constitution to show that uh, upon a position, he was the secretary general or kind of interim general. Nay, I say, Anungo mirai pa. Kuti maita allegation based on your head, not on any fact. And the court uh, noted that. Uh, and then the court says, Saka, in the circumstances, it uses these words, it was simply their word that he wasn't a secretary general or interim secretary general. It was simply their word, the judge observes. And he says, that is not enough. And uh, he further uh, says of Chavang, uh, under the Chavang thing, contrary to Kansas' allegation that Chavang considered that he was not a member of, of CCC, the judge says, his opposing affidavit has claims in innumerable paragraphs saying he's a bona fide member and official of the party with authority to write. 
the correspondence uh, or correspondences, letters. that he wrote to the presiding officers of parliament. And, and, and look, uh, Muhammad Zang, uh, Manning, uh, the affidavit that the judge is referring to, it's common cause, in the public domain. You will see that on several paragraphs, the guy says I am this I am I am I'm secretary interim secretary general uh, and I'm a bona fide and then the judge says in that case the owners to prove entitlement to the declaratory orders that the applicants are seeking is on them it's not on the respondent, first respondent, or, 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 or it's on them, the applicants. And the judge says, they did not even begin to discharge that on us. They have not established their case on a balance of probabilities as required by law and are therefore not entitled to the declarator which they seek. That's what uh, the, the judge says. Uh, so, what does the judge also makes some interesting, uh, uh, having said that it would have been useful for Chamisa uh, to, to uh, support his letter, which well, it was found to be discredited. Uh, could have put an affidavit there as the leader of the party, not to explain. So, in order to understand the judgment, and I'm, 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 I'm I, I will be ending shortly, but still within that uh, scary three hours' time. It's, I, 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 I suggest it's also important to. Take note of what the court said on Chamisa. He says, I am not sure why the party leader, that is Chamisa, is averse to appearing in court because in an earlier case, Majaya and others, the court expressed similar sentiments about Chamisa when it said, what is surprising is that neither the applicants nor the MTC Alliance as a political party led by Nelson Chamisa has approached the court for a, declar a declaratory order confirming that the MTC Alliance is the political party in parliament and not the MTC Twangirai. The right to recall the, the applicants and other MTC members of parliament is ancillary to the grant or refusal of the declaratory order. You know, when they had the similar case before, Chamisa named this Ashiti, Chamisa Ashiti Ndini, Chamisa, the leader of the leader, I mean, sorry, the leader of the MDCA, and the MDCA, Ashiti Ndisu part, and we are, uh, we are not, you know, MDC Tiwuku. Vaidaro Pamromo Chet, you remember that uh, Thomas Mafumo song, Yangayanya Pamromo Chet, could you write him an affidavit to confirm that 
was a mountainous. It was a tall that they did not feel they should discharge. They have been there before. Now they again find themselves where they should tender an affidavit, either as triple C or, 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 and, and, uh, or the leader or both. They say no. How on earth do you claim leadership? If when moments of leadership come, you are conspicuous by your absence. I mean, what is leadership to you? Is leadership Is leadership to provide motivational verses even Kanazoka Kosha, and we can give respect and agree. Isn't leadership necessary in moments like this, where you are facing a potentially catastrophic situation in parliament with your members having been recalled and more of your members facing the same prospect? I mean, what is leadership? And especially, where it's not a trial, it's a court application decided on the papers. You don't have to be there. How would you not have affidavit and taken off? The only presumption you think I suspect could be is because Unochka perjury. You are afraid that if you tender an affidavit, there are so many inconsistencies and developments and the facts you know could be used by your detractors to make a case of perjury against you. And when we are not scared perjury, Tagambo sangana nao kwa upenyu mabasom too many times to forget that. I don't think it's a coincidence that this is happening twice within a three-year period. Magaita the same thing in 2020. Magara ma MP Zenyu who were under uh, the onslaught ya Monzora. And and ku court I would defend Pamromochete or not defend ne affidavit because it's a court of law. But Kuita afi David ya zaga siana ni kunyora tamba yemuswa eleven September kunze maganyora. Kuita afi David, it's a statement under oath. Ukanyepa, you might find yourself behind bars. Now, I as I sit here uh, and making uh, this presentation, I don't know exactly why Tamisa ne ne patriarchy. Uh, but like the judge or triggered by the judge I'm led to conclude you see Chamisa is a lawyer he must know better than uh, some of us the value of an affidavit in a case like this his affidavit son affidavit would most certainly, 
if uh, they are telling the truth about the things they have been saying, would have uh, made the, a, a difference in this case. But if they know Tvarukunyepa, the difference would have been to his detriment. And it's not surprising that one of the Ostalos, Nana Prim, not Prim, what is his name? Not Prim, um, um, Promise, Promise Mkwanans. They don't care about lying out there because they are not under oath. Wanungo Taura was Nyepa, you know. And, and in my opinion, um, doing so, or doing that, is contemptuous of the public. When you have a moment to tell the truth and you can tell that truth under oath, you will force all of us to sit down and say, ah, all right, oh no, so I a case. But we got teaser, we will say, you know, Urugu Tiza Manyepo. And the judge says, I, I, I don't know what, uh, uh, what is the case, you know, uh, it is surprising. And, and then the judge, after making that observation about the prior case uh, in those uh, Manzora uh, recalls, he says, when the judge made the remark I just read, could he, it was surprising that neither applicant, applicants, uh, no MTC led by his chemistry uh, approached the court. He says, this judge now in this case, he says, the above remarks did not make him any wiser. The above remarks did not make Chamisa any wiser. And in dealing with Chamisa, I would just sit down and really scratch my, my, my head very hard. Because nothing teaches us better than experience. If you have crossed the river before, you must know the deep end and you must deal with it much, much better. But to face the, that river, the same thing, and behave the same way is mind challenging. It just leaves someone who is uh, well-meaning, who is not malicious, but is looking at the facts and nothing but the facts, to say, wait a minute, what the hell is going on here? What is going on? The, uh, the judge says, the first respondent, Chavang, alleged that the party leader, Nelson, and the party itself, Triple C, did not join this litigation in my applicants I who were recalled. Guess what? Because the party is not with the recalled applicants. And in fact, the party instigated their recall. Akanyora in black and white. Is there a leader? Anone Zuzuzuaganyora so otareta so. Osi Agunyora Afidavid with Amanye Pai. And ndia niko ko kwa mure ma kwa maga gara iko ko no ne computer o phone yenyu mchituka wa mwa mo ma ninge ma social media o ndia anofunga kuti such facts are honorable and who really are sina malice ngoda kutuka wa mwe for the sake of Yukuva Tuka, who thinks that when you face a situation that uh, we are facing, as we read this judgment and we heard the submissions, we should ignore. We should say, ah, Sorry, Professor. Uh, Co-host, can you hear Professor? No, I can't hear him. I think he needs to look on his side. 
Okay, uh, Professor, I've uh, I've just muted your mic. We couldn't hear you. It looks like it might be network issues. So um, uh, if you can hear me, please unmute your mic. Nozi, can you hear him? Could you hear him? Or is it uh, just me? No, I can't hear him. Uh, let's try to see what's going on there. But I think, uh, yeah, I think it's a network issue. He's dropped. Uh, please, uh, when you see him, I'm sure he'll reconnect. Uh, let's bring him back up. And also the co-hosts, uh, we're going to open up the space for those who would like to uh, ask questions. Uh, so I know their requests. I can see a, a number of them. So I think uh, let's start uh, bringing people up. But obviously, remember what I asked of you earlier. Please, if we could uh, respect that as well. Uh, so, yeah, uh, Professor, I can see you're back. Can you hear me? Sorry, Professor. Uh, is he back or can you guys not see him on your side? The co-hosts. Uh, I see him, uh, but I don't think he's, he can hear us. Maybe if he can hear us, he can drop, then we can add him back. I might do the trick. Okay, I don't see him anymore. Okay, so I don't see him currently, but I'm sure he'll reconnect. He's dropped, Salani. Uh, yeah, I'm sure he will reconnect. Okay, whilst we do that, uh, let's start with the segment where we obviously add uh, people so they can speak. Obviously, I know people know the rules of engagement. Let's respect one another and let's keep it short as well. Uh, as you know, we want to make room, room for others to to come through. So whilst we're waiting for him uh, to come back, uh, what are your thoughts uh, on what's been said so far? Let's uh, have a bit of a discussion on that. And co-host, please keep your eye out uh, so that uh, we can add the professor back onto Mom. the speaker's podium. Thank you. Okay, we'll, we'll do that. Um, well... What everything that he has said, you know, I, I think it makes sense, you know, and um, sometimes we have to detach feelings and look at things as they are. And I know a lot of people might not agree with this view, especially considering it's Professor Jonathan Moyo and the general dissent or content that other people might, might have. But if if only they can stop looking at the person and hear the words that he's saying, uh, the, they will find sense in, 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 in what he has been saying. Because the, the problem that we have is sometimes we look at who's talking and say, ah, no, it's, it's Takawira, no, I can't listen to him, it's bias. I've seen some comments that say, no, it doesn't make sense, uh, it's nonsense. Uh, uh, will Jonathan Moyo tell us the truth? But it's just merely reading from what the judgment says and making comments. And most of these comments are helpful uh, in a sense because we, the thing is, we are very allergic to a, a different diver, divergent view of what we believe. We believe no triple C is right, then we can, can be criticized, our leadership. Uh, can be criticized, the whole system is captured. And so once we get fixated in that and we close out all other views, then we have a problem. But I think this has been a very good balanced analysis where I believe if leadership of, of Triple C were to listen and hear and take notes and if they genuinely want to uh, ensure that the party succeeds, they would actually listen to some of this. It's mostly the people you don't agree with that give you the most beneficial advice because your friends will just clap because they don't want to hurt your feelings, but uh, this is good. I don't know what my other co-hosts um, think before we go to DG Sheds. Uh, thank you so much, Taka. I can see DG has got uh, uh, his hands up. Uh, DG, please come through. Oh, thank you very much. Uh, I came in uh, maybe halfway through the presentation. But uh, what I think Triple C should do is to go back to the original partners. Uh, I, I once uh, listened to one presentation where a Kenyan who was talking on behalf of 
uh, the opposition parties in Kenya, he said the only way they managed to remove a sitting uh, party was through unity uh, of the opposition. So yes, uh, Chamisa are charismatic and Anwunza Chawunga, but I think he, he also needs a mafungiro even Nogadasana Chabango, even Dagi Chaye. I think he understands the law. I remember when he was brought up here, uh, Salani, what happened is exactly what he said was going to happen, especially issue of not involving Triple C as, as the party they both belong to. And I think what, what they need to go to do is to sit down with Chabango, even bring in uh, Vanabiti, bring in, but most importantly, fight for the release of Job Sikala and the other political prisoners. Because I think there's a missing link here where only one person is driving the boat. And uh, I think they should concentrate more on bringing all the parties involved together and, and, and sit down and discuss and make the way forward, not just one man uh, driving the show. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much uh, for that contribution. Uh, can I can see Chengetai, <laughs> you've also joined. Uh, good to see you, Chengetai. Please come through before I go to the other speakers. Uh, thanks, Salani. Um, please go through to the other speakers because I just joined. Um, I'll be comfortable okay. after that. Yes, thanks. Uh, no problem. No problem. Ghetto, you've been there for a while. Before I go to Nozi, please come through. Ghetto, are you with us? Can you hear me? Okay, uh, Nozi, please come through. Okay, um, well, that was an interesting uh, uh, submission by the professor. I, I hung on to every word. Um, his analysis uh, for me was spot on. And um, it, it also seemed to come from a very genuine place because um, he also got quite emotional about uh, some of the things that were happening. And uh, one of the things that I, I definitely related with him uh, because I made the comment was oh, the no, lies. No, no. One second. Uh, Professor, you're back. <laughs> we were looking for you. Uh, yeah, I was also looking for you, gremlins. You know, I just re realized I was uh, talking alone and I said uh, I must watch my... Uh, language uh, I thought I go dungeon, but hey, we do it. We do it. Yes, you know, I, uh, you know, I, I, I haven't figured out uh, how to keep my. Um, uh, phone angle, you know, protect a screen, and I, I like it that way. But Nengen uh, Singa only, so I will just be having it there, thinking everything was, is okay. So, oh no, no problem. No, so no, how, no problem how long, at all. How long uh, did I go without you hearing me? No, you, it's uh, basically what happened. I think as soon as that happened, I uh, muted your mic and then you dropped <coughs> off. So basically, that you weren't on the space with us, so I'm not quite sure whether you were still talking in the background. Yes, I could But, you were... so, uh, 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 but uh, that's what I'm trying to find out. What did you hear me saying last? Um, uh, my speakers, what did you hear him say last? <coughs> I'm towards the end of my presentation. Panepa, I want panepa, to pick it. Our, uh... Okay, Panepa, when you were talking about Chamisa. Uh, as a leader, I think those were the last words you spoke when you said he's not getting any wiser. Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah. No. Yeah. That. that uh, thank you for for that. And I was. I. I uh, and I was uh, making that uh, remark uh, not um, as my own. But that is the uh, that's the the judge the finding <coughs> of the judge uh, saying that um, 
it is surprising. Could you, uh, uh, okay, before I, 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 I proceed, can you do me a favor, Salani? If I uh, manage to get myself bummed off again, can you buzz me, literally phone me? Of course I can. Of course, I'll yeah, do that. That one, it, in, in that way, we, uh, we would not, uh, it would not take much time. Yeah. Absolutely. I will meet it. I'm, mo I'm most grateful for that. Thank you very much. Yeah. So it was the... <coughs> <clears throat> this was the finding of the judge to say if you you you, you experienced this before, um, one would have assumed that uh, once bitten twice shy, you would not do it again. But they, here we are; he has done it again, and um, uh, then the. Related to this, this time is it's worse than the last time because this time a letter was written by Chamisa, uh, which the applicants were relying on, uh, and and the judge makes a, a useful, instructive comments about that letter because, and and we need to talk about it. And highlight it uh, because it's it's in uh, it, it's it's in the judgment. But another reason why, in my humble opinion, we need to talk about this is because Triple C MPs, some of whom have since been uh, recalled, made a lot of noise and disrupted Parliament uh, with uh, uh, September 11, 11 September, 11 September, something like that. <coughs> Chance. But the judge says this about that letter. That on the face of it, that letter purports to have been written on 11 September. And Tabang, as first respondent, uh, disputes that letter its authenticity. Uh, and the judge says, in his view, Chabangu should not have expended any energy on that, you know, disputing that letter because the authenticity of that letter, because there's a deeper problem with that letter. And it's this, supposing that it was written on 11 September, 2023, it purports what is clear. Uh, I mean, uh, 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 we are supposing that it was. Uh, is they are telling the truth that it was written on 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 on, on that date. Uh, at least it purports to. What is clear is that its author drafted it and kept it to himself. If it's true that it was written on the eleventh. It was never delivered to the addressee until 5 October 2023. The practice in, in parliament is commendable, says the judge. Their officers seem to acknowledge receipt of every correspondence which is delivered to parliament by date stamping it. So the applicants themselves filed these copies, the date stamped copies of the letters. And the judge says this fact that it is the applicants who filed it, uh, uh, who filed the copies, it illustrates that they were in possession of their return copies and says, there is no doubt therefore that Nelson Chamisa September letter was only received at parliament almost a month later on 5 October. If it is not a contrived document, as we should assume it is not, then it serves only to demonstrate one point, his tardiness. And he sits on the job. If you are unkind, you, you would say he sleeps on the job, sitting on a letter that is written on the, allegedly on the 11th of September, only to send it physically to Parliament on the 5th of October, a day after the Senate received its uh, recall letter, two days after Parliament got its uh, recall letter from Chabang. 
And then the judge says, more importantly, which is another fatal fact about this letter, the letter was only addressed to the Speaker of uh, the National Assembly, which is actually the Speaker of Parliament, and it was copied to the President of Senate, not written to the President of Senate. And the judge reminds us, uh, who are reading his judgment about the lawyers and the applicants, uh, I mean the parties to the case in the first instance, he says the acronym CC in letter writing means carbon copy. So when you carbon copy a document to a recipient, you are literally saying to that recipient, this is for nothing. It's just for your information only. So the recipient is not expected to do anything about that. So, in fact, Kanazwaga Kosha, and you say carbon copy, namely CCC, it can in fact be taken as something very rude. So, you're saying, uh, well, they are saying, in this case, the applicants, uh, the letter was sent to the Senate president, whom they had maligned and all that, only for her information uh, and not for, for anything else. So the legal position is that, in fact, the Senate president was not informed of that letter or the contents of that letter. Uh, and, 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 the, and the judge says, this is so terrible. Uh, it doesn't use the word terrible. Um, and then it is more damning is the date when the letter was received. The tenures of the members had been terminated by operation of law on the 3rd and 4th of October, the point I just made, is, you know. So the letter comes when those people are no longer MPs. And you are saying, if you are going to write about us and what you send to me, but you're, and, but you're doing it after the horses have bolted. Uh, so the... Um, uh, the judge says, Nelson Chamisa's second communication dated 4 October 2023, which apparently is a protest letter that he wrote after the fact, acknowledging that the recalls had already been made, was received at Parliament on October 6. The argument, therefore, by the applicants that the presiding officers disregarded these letters from Nelson Chamisa has no basis. And in I pose the purple, because right from the beginning, as we started, no one is entitled to their own facts. The, the uh, 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 one triple C, they have now created a culture of mendacity. They don't value the truth. It's very difficult to deal with something, I mean, rather someone who doesn't, in the first place, deal with you f at the level of facts. Who is spinning, spinning all the time. Every opportunity to communicate is a spinning opportunity. To the point of spinning in court, here are these applicants telling the court that uh, the letters of their president were disregarded by parliament or specifically by the presiding officers of parliament. When these letters, all of, both of them, the one purportedly written on the 11th of September and the one that was written on the 4th, uh, uh, 4th of October, dated 4th of October, but sent on the 6th, complaining the, the second one. The first one communicated us, with us like this. The second one, oh, look at what you have done. You, you disregarded our 11 October, I mean 11 September later, blah, blah, blah. And now these guys are also impeaching the presiding officers in their application, and they are saying these presiding officers disregarded the letters. The judge says, no, there is no basis in fact. The correspondents <coughs> were not preemptive, as applicants allege. They were ex post facto, after the fact. This is um, 
uh, uh, what the judge says about Chamisa. We, we've heard what he said about um, uh, the applicant, I mean, uh, the applicants and also about the respondents. But he says that, and it's notable what he says about Samza. And I'm, I'm now left with just three parts, small parts, about what the court said on constitutions and structures. The judge in the judgment says, although there could be many definitions of a political party, and me as a political scientist, uh, I appreciate that there indeed are many. The Constitutional Court has already provided some guidance on this, uh, provided an all-encompassing definition of a political party in Mazimure and others' case, when the court said, a political party is a product of a voluntary association of people who share a common ideology on how the affairs of the state should be administered and believe that if some members are elected to parliament and the political party gets control of the levers of government or governmental power, they will use them for the benefit of all citizens. It is constituted in terms of its own constitution, and as such, it is a legal entity independent of its members. And, 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 and um, this is useful because, again, the Mendacious colleagues uh, 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 in Triple C, they like to obfuscate and say, and they run and give a definition of uh, a political party, which is in the Political Finances Act, and say, uh, 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 we, we are okay without a constitution. We are not pro breaking any law. After all, that act, the Political Parties Finance Act, says a political party is any political organization, full stop. Can a mafia actually can wait a political organization, this and this, or whatever? That can't be right, especially coming from lawyers who know that there are different sources of law and who know that acts of parliament are a subsidiary. They, they are subordinate to the constitution and that it is the constitutional court that pronounces what is legal, with the last word, what is constitutional. And they know that in a case involving one of their own, the, the, the Constitutional Court gave a better definition of what a political party is than what is in the Finances Act. But this is what the thing says. But here is the judgment helping us understand an all-encompassing definition of a political party that we, I think, should be guided by and used. Having given that judgment, the, the court says it is nevertheless is admitted that a constitution is not a prerequisite for the formation of a political party. And then goes on to say, even though it is not a prerequisite, it is, however, highly advisable if situations like the one before the court are to be avoided. And because what is happening now happened before. Kunyanya behavior. In 2020, because uh, they were told the, the uh, legal, and in that case here, 2020, Shamisa himself had appealed to the Supreme Court. And then the, uh, the Supreme Court came back and told him, uh, you are not a legitimately elected or constituted president of the MDC. Uh, the legal position is you must go uh, back, do an extraordinary Congress on the basis of the 2014 structures. And then even though he Chamisa went there, he decided to not, uh, not to abide by that decision. And then said, okay, if we are not the, if the Gweru Congress did not, was not the fifth 
Congress of the MDC, because the court was not recognizing it, and if we are not MDC, then we are from today, April Fool's Day, 20, March 20, I mean, April Fool's Day 2020, after the 31st March decision, we are today MDCA, and our constitution will remain that constitution we did in Guero, RC, because we are no longer that MDC. This constitution from today, April Fool's Day 2020, will be an interim constitution that will be ratified in a Congress at the appropriate time after that one at Akaita. Uh, and uh, uh, we will now constitute ourselves with this party called MDCA. After all, we contested the elections in 2018 as MDCA based on the uh, pre-election alliance agreement at Akaita Egaitwa Tsangirai to bring together the remnants the MDC, MDC 99, uh, MDC, MDC, uh, which ended up being called MDC Green, PDP, what, what, and they were brought together. Ngati Rambetagadaro, and now this one is a, 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 a de facto a, 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 an interim constitution. Ndiyo Yaga from April Fool's Day 2020 to 24 January. 2022. But the point Apa, uh, is they've not learned from uh, uh, that thing. Uh, you know, yeah, that unfortunate uh, uh, development yeah, 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 in 2020. Uh, because if they had learned and they had become much the wiser, they would have ensured that they don't have this situation before the court, they would have avoided it. Why? Because, says the judge, a serious political party is one that anticipates these things and sees itself running the affairs of the state. Uh, that on its own means having millions of citizens in its membership and other structures. It ideally would have, the party that is, would have administrative structures through which it is run. You know, it's also when uh, some of us, and me being one out of many, who pointed this out from the beginning, ab initio, have structures. And when we said have structures, it was not like we are saying you don't have structures. It was because because we knew that they had structures based on that uh, uh, interim constitution uh, April Fool's uh, uh, 2020. We didn't think that from 2020 to January 24, 2022, they didn't have a constitution. One who uh, certainly we would not qualify to be political analysts or students of politics if we didn't know. We knew they were. And the Vagaramba Wachi Tuza, Nasi Kwasangana Standing National Standing Committee, Mangwana Kwasangana National Executive Committee. And uh, uh, the last month, Kwaka Sangana National Council. And they kept uh, having these meetings. The, these uh, three uh, main bodies, Uku National Youth Assembly, Eru Sangana. It was nearly two years. And, 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 and it would be preposterous for our colleagues, whom we respect, for them to think that we didn't know that they have these structures. But it would equally be preposterous of them to think that when we're saying our ah, structures, we're actually being polite, hoping that the message will just 
be self evident we could see kutivanga la kutotizana we knew it's common cause that these people met uh, at a series of meeting they had a national executive committee meeting on the 21st of january 2022 ku cresta lodge ku harare yakatarisa zvese zvavanga vaita ma consultations and so forth including the the outcome of consultations that were done on the 15th of december 2022 in bulawayo and that meeting yakaitwa ku bulawayo organized by eh eh siso mbuso and uh, uh, bebe abed neko and there were other people there including professor ngube and so forth and we see colleagues vachida kungotamba nevanhu a picture yakatorwa ikoko zonza ah but mtunga mira no kona kutora picture na anyone believe me there are some people including yeh chamisa who knows how critical and sensitive that meeting is other than saying it was on that date 15th december 2022 and vanga vari pa break up apo vachitora that thing well meaning people will not say who else was there and what was happening because that was a very sensitive meeting and dai chamisa achidila ne public honestly he would have said this and made clear kuti what is the the problem yana yona chavangu rather than this uh, obfuscation distortion and mispresentation of facts because soon after that meeting there were these january meetings which culminated on key uh, meetings of the national executive committee on the 21st of january 2022 and the 22nd of january i mean sorry 20 yes 22nd of january 2022 to create triple c and to unveil it on the uh, 24th of january uh, because of the nomination court that set on that day for the 26th of march 2022 by elections No, the truth and facts don't kill anyone you can interpret them the way you want but when we say structure structure tangata kuona kuti akufamba yega akusiya national council yake yaka yaka gadzirisa chinhu chinaye akufamba yega achikampena uh, but uh, we know that after the unveiling we could see public things that showed with vachiri kushanda vese but gare gare zva kunakidza ma crowds akawanda akutiza nechinhu eka and it was not the best communication so kwe uri kutizire nechinhu where are the others why are you now appearing as if factually speaking iwewe weka waka create a triple c and chinhu chako and you are telling people that this is new 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 it's a new kid on the block a new kid and on the block are kushandisa a, 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 a twitter and now x handle which was formed in 2010 and you can't erase that footprint there why can't you just say nicely could deem and what what you know uh, i don't know you want to play hide hide and seek fine but because it was now appearing with, uh, you are you, you are doing that the argument of structure was a uh, uh, where where is everyone else where is the uh, product of the labor of work that you did yourself and others consulting with others you didn't do alone a uh, muchi consulta and so forth culminating in 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 uh, and it it that resonates with what the judge says could a serious political party is one which sees itself running the affairs of the state and therefore it will have millions of members or citizens in its membership and structures and accordingly the ideal thing would be it will have administrative structures through which it does that and this thing had those things uh, the attempt to create new ones and so forth was interesting to observe and then the judge says a political party which does not have constitutive documents to make reference 
two, opens itself up to the vagaries of inclement political weather, like what we are seeing now. And, 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 and this is a very powerful uh, 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 restraint, dispassionate comment that summarizes what many uh, citizens have said without malice or prejudice. The responses have been strange, as if people, uh, you get responses which say, can I structure a kosher? Why did it? Why did this part have this can any mass structures? Can mass structures a kanaka? Why did we have a coup in 2017 and so forth? It's like someone saying oxygen is very important for your existence. If it's important, why did so and so die? Or oh, if oxygen is important, I mean, come on, you know, come on, guys. We don't need to uh, uh, reduce our discourse uh, to these uh, ridiculous levels. The point is clear. And hopefully now that it has been made by a judge, uh, our colleagues uh, will, will, will take note. Uh, and they should not say to us, ah, but it's none of your business. I've already indicated that it is our business because uh, if you are seeking power to run the country, the, uh, that is everyone's business. Uh, and, 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 and it is for this reason that I, I, chose, I thought I should highlight this part which deals with the constitution and, and structures, uh, uh, and which is not a new question. It was raised in the earlier case uh, when there were those uh, uh, infamous uh, uh, recalls in uh, 2020. Then, as I conclude, I want to make uh, refer <clears throat> references to two key things. Uh, the first one is that um, uh, the court made some uh, observations on um, CCC, the party. And, and uh, the judge says the following. A closer reading of section 129, subsection K, would show that nowhere in it is the member of a parliament accorded any active role. Because the record members went to the court uh, as if they could do so with a reasonable expectation of success. Uh, the court says the power of recall from parliament created by section 129, subsection 1K of the constitution is reposed in the political party to which the member of parliament belonged at the time they were elected. It is that consent party which recalls a member. By parity of reasoning, the member cannot contest his or her recall against any other person without joining the consent political party. This is very important. It's not uh, the preliminary point raised uh, on the joinder issue. Now it's on merit. It's the substantive issue that if you want to challenge your recall, uh, if you have been, you can't do it uh, without joining. The, you, you can't do it successfully without joining the the, the 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 concerned political party. An applicant who alleges that his or her recall from parliament was unlawful must, and there's a, an a, 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 an earlier judgment by Justice Quenda. In, in the Majaya and others versus Monzora case, must seek protection from the party which they say they represent in parliament. The right is parasitical and cannot stand without relying on the host. Put in another way, the parasite and host relationship described above is not removed by the allegation that there is an intruder or an insurgent who has come between the concerned political party and the member, and has arrogated himself the political party entitlement. Like, oh, there is an imposter, or oh, there is a, 
a tortoise on a lamp post you 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 don't uh, remove this parasite and host relationship by saying the political party cannot abdicate the responsibility to approach the courts, broach the subject and seek redress in terms of section 129, subsection 1K to reclaim its right. Where the consent political party does not agree with the recall, it is of necessity required to contest the lawfulness or otherwise of a recall in court. In court, something which Chamisa has been averse to doing since the Monzora case. A recalled member of parliament cannot come to court alone and then drag in a third party like Chavangu and choose to ignore his or a political party. Cannot. Ukaita is also it's a doomed pursuit. And this is very important to, if you understand this, you will understand what has happened and you will not come up with a, a politically serving propaganda that uh, it's an open and shut legal case in terms of the critical importance of the political party and joining it and if I search Kegu Sainama affidavit on their behalf as the party leaders and on behalf of the party as a, a juristic person, unless Ziva is not on their side, and if they put pen and paper to write an affidavit, they will be open to uh, perjury issues. Then the second last thing is, which is very important to Kwandiri. Uh, but uh, the court um, uh, 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 made some interesting and useful comments for a discussion, is the question of paternity, which the judge starts with the first paragraph, but then when he's dealing with the merits, he builds on that. The judge says, just like it is difficult, if not impossible, for a man to impugn the paternity of his brother, without directly involving the parents, it is naive for a member of a political party to approach a court seeking to prove that another is a non-member of the same party without the involvement of the political party itself. Pap, but you say, Pap, you can't say a will member so forth, and you think so, the applicants in the two applications, the judge said, share the mortification of failing to appreciate the elementary notion that they are individuals who are distinct from their political party. They cannot conflate, mix up the rights acquired through their individual membership in the party with the responsibilities which are reposed in the political party itself. While a constitution is not a prerequisite for the formation of a political party, uh, uh, you know, creation and so forth, party actual, can, because Vagaramba is a, a, a constitution, Party it's a prerequisite for the party to come and speak for itself. The constitution would have, would have helped, Havana Kuisa, then Kuzoti, party Acho, Ayui Foti, then how is paternity going to be established? It becomes a problem, and this is a problem which was insurmountable for these 
uh, uh, applicants. That's the one side of paternity that I wanted to highlight. The second uh, one is this, which is not in the judgment. I, I, I make this comment. So, uh, my members, the paternity is your political party, is the parent. But in my view, there's a question of the paternity party. My grandparents, a member. Uh, how, you know, who formed this party that you say is a new quote kid on the blog, and when was it formed? I think those are factual questions that have been not, 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 uh, that have not been answered. And going forward, if people are not careful, they will be tripped by that. And then lastly, Professor, are you there? Uh, your mic is muted, if you can oh, hear me. Sorry, sorry, I've corrected that. Um, uh, thank you. Uh, well, where we are now is uh, the application has been dismissed. It's up to them now to uh, uh, the parties, that is, uh, to do the needful as they see it, uh, but uh, the clear position is that the by-elections uh, are continuing. And if you read this judgment, as uh, I know colleagues have done, it's difficult to imagine how, especially after they withdrew the reliefs they were seeking from the uh, presiding officers, of Parliament and from the Zimbabwe Electoral Commission who do things by oper operation of law, the by-elections will proceed. And we know that uh, the nomination court is uh, set to sit on the 7th of uh, November, which is on Tuesday. Uh, I think that it is difficult to imagine anything that will happen to stop that. But people have their options, they have their rights. Uh, they take, take the matter on appeal. But I would say, uh, from my reading of this judgment, that uh, it will take a very brave person to appeal, believing that uh, they have a chance of success, but who knows? <clears throat> so that's one. Uh, the, the 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 question uh, in in conclusion. One part of it is uh, so. Where to now? You know, what does it mean? This, I think, uh, the fact that the judgment has come uh, on the heels of the nomination court is is an interesting dynamic that puts people under pressure. Uh, uh, busy, as, as you would say, uh, and, 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 and we will learn and be enlightened by their decisions and choices. Uh, the one thing that uh, uh, is, 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 is really, as far as I'm concerned, uh, a, a, a matter of concern, uh, is this thing of um, distorting things, kusat kusataura chokwadi, the facts. You know, they must be agreed facts because no one is entitled to their own facts. They dis disagree on our opinions, what we make of these facts, but not what they are. And this thing of demonizing people who make clear facts uh, is the bane of politics in Zimbabwe. Uh, and and, and, and uh, uh, it makes a mockery of the historical claim that uh, we have made and we cherish about the high levels of education, the standards uh, of education, uh, with all the difficulties uh, we have experienced with our country. We are not a kind of uh, uneducated people. Uh, and uh, just trying to look around across the world, what our compatriots are doing, knowing the background that is unhappy, but what they are doing is a matter of national pride. 
They just are a people of excellence. And, and one prays that that excellency uh, will sooner rather than later uh, start showing itself in the quality of our public uh, discourse. But the very last point in conclusion is that there is a, this is not the first time we have had this de development of, of, of recalls. Uh, as 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 we, everyone who has been talking about this uh, has been making reference to, but there is an interesting difference between this one and the other one that occurred uh, in uh, March or started then in uh, after March the Supreme Court decision of thirty first March twenty twenty. That one came roughly around midway since the between the election the previous one and the one we just had this one has happened right at the start of uh, the first session of uh, the 10th parliament uh and that dynamic is very interesting because it uh, uh, it, it 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 will impact on the calculation that uh, the members who have either been affected already, those who were before the court and uh, who have lost the case, this round at least, and others who, who, who may be facing the job. Uh, it's a five-year proposition. The other one was uh, midway, what, what we can uh, maybe suffer it and see what happens. What, what. But he is is very, you know, and uh, the other one, Yakawea, when they had gotten their vehicles, all of them, uh, Yakaipa, it will influence the decision premises. It will structure them for quite a number of, uh, of uh, uh, MPs who may be affected. And I think one does not have to be a rocket scientist to predict that there must be some massive or quite different in number and region uh, slit of recalls uh, right uh, by the corner, imminent. Um, although it remains to be seen as a decision of those who, who, who are uh, affected. But I think that um, uh, for students of uh, politics, this is a very enriching, informing uh, experience. And one hopes and prays that it will inform praxis for the better in the immediate, intermediate and long term. Uh, I thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Professor Jonathan Moyo. Uh, thank you so much. Wow, what a wealth of knowledge. And I can see we've got a number of requests there. Uh, so we will open, obviously, the, the platform for people to request the mic and to um, put forward their questions. Uh, but people, please be brief. Uh, that's what I'm kindly requesting. And also, let's be respectful. So uh, co-host, uh, please uh, do assist me with that. As you know, uh, we, Professor did give us a time frame, so we also want to assist uh, him with that as well. So uh, I guess without wasting much time, let's start off with Elisha first, who's had his hand up for quite some time now. I think you have uh, uh, no, uh, 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 the trim lecture room. The professor is doing his best. Uh, yeah. Uh, personally, I have to confess to say that uh, uh, in uh, in uh, Professor Jonathan, I, I, I'm uh, a triple C a strange supporter, but uh, this is the first time I agree with you. I think sometimes we should be very honest with ourselves uh, in as much as uh, when uh, something that is needs to be done is done. Uh, I want to thank you, Professor, for making it very clear mm -hmm and also demystifying other notions that are not in, even in the public dominion. 
uh, like the issue to say that um, there was another meeting that was held in Blawayo and the Sengezo was even in attendance. Uh, that on its own, uh, I, I think you you just let the kid out. out. Uh, uh, th those are some gray areas which even many people are not even uh, uh, abreast with. Uh, I think the other issue, uh, Professor, I think you should have, uh, I thought you should have uh, emphasized was the issue to do with uh, uh, who are these leadership of Triple C? Is Triple C do you have vice president? Uh, and if it is so, who are these? And if it is so, uh, what is their duty, especially during the time of campaigns? And some of these issues began to broke the mind of people, which may give the leverage to say, is he Chabang alone or is we've got the, his lieutenant? Because it's, it's, it's naive to have a political party like Triple C uh, being a party uh, that can uh, uh, govern this country, but not in having a, a clear adm administrative uh, uh, issues uh, in public domain. Some of these issues is a, is a clear test to them. Uh, to me, I have to to admit, to say there are issues that need to be cleared. I think you, Professor, you should, in one time, I think he trying to knock sense in these guys. Uh, I think Zimbabwe, we are now having a problem to say when um, a professor is aligned to certain part or uh, if Elisha is aligned to certain part, we, 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 we sometimes don't agree, but yet uh, one of us will be having a vast of knowledge and uh, an advice like what you have been doing here. I just want to thank you very much for making it very clear. I think your analysis and your way, the way you were taking us through, uh, you never showed the biasness. But what you just did was that you are, you are so candid in what you in, in all your presentation. I was listening. Uh, I think it's so it's, it's now a while, but this is uh, something that we we expect as a country. You know, I was thinking to say that if Jamisa wants to win this election or any party in Zimbabwe, yeah, remember, party. Please, uh, remember we've got other people waiting. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, now I'm landing. Okay, go ahead. No, I'm landing. I, I'll say that if if I, I think if 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 any opposition party in Zimbabwe is dreaming of dislodging ZANPF. I think there's need for these political parties to to join EANs and try to iron out their differences and, conf and, and confront their common enemy who be ZANPF. Thank you very much. No, you're very welcome. Uh, thank you so much for that. It looks like that was more of a, a contribution and uh, compliments uh, towards you, uh, Professor. Uh, thank you, Elisha. Uh, let's go through the rules of engagement once one more time, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, we've got a short space. Uh, obviously, we've got the professor with us, but not for long. So what we want to do is make room for people to ask questions. Yes, uh, you can come through with your compliments, but if they're brief and then Go straight to the question so that he can respond, please. Uh, though, it, let's do it like that. Uh, let's go to uh, hot seat. Uh, please come through. Oh, yeah. Sorry, uh, is can someone hear me? Hot seat, are you there? If uh, there's no response from you and you are on uh, on the speaker's podium, we will drop you. Unfortunately, today I don't have much time to be looking for you. So in the event that um, you're possibly not on your mic, uh, please co-host. Let's drop uh, those who do not respond. It could be connectivity issues. We go to the next. Uh, right, uh, let's go to uh, Cove. You know I call you Cove. <laughs> please come through. Oh, um, Bikov, are you with us? Yeah, no, no, no questions today. Thank you so much. Oh, wonderful. Okay, so that means that you're happy. Okay, thank you so much for that. Uh, let's go to uh, Nozi. You know you. You're welcome. You're one of our co-hosts. Just lift up your hand if you have a question. The same thing with the co-hosts. DG, do you have something you'd like to say? Uh, one, one question to uh, Professor. What would you advise uh, Triple C and Chamisa to do right now. Uh, professor? 
Yes, okay. I'm here. I'm oh, here. I, 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 with your indulgence, I would like to take a rain check on that one. Uh, I will rather do uh, on uh, uh, another occasion. My mind was uh, focused on uh, unpacking the judgment. I, I wouldn't want to give uh, advice uh, shooting from the hip. Uh, I would want to give considered advice. And uh, I just uh, prepared myself to discuss the judgment uh, with your indulgence. Uh, I hope uh, you will uh, forgive me. Of course. No, no, no. Uh, that's uh, absolutely fine. Uh, Gigi, Shawar, next time, next time. Yeah. Do you have anything else you'd like to ask? Uh, uh, no, not ask, but i just like to commend him for the good work. Uh, that's it. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you so much, my brother. Uh, right, Hot Seat is not there. I, I called Hot, hot Seat uh, before. Uh, can we go to uh, Divine? But Divine, uh, please, I, I noticed a lot of the messages that you sent me. Uh, we're not here for that. The professor has uh, definitely given his presentation and comments with regard to the current judgment. Uh, let's restrict our, obviously, our submissions to that. So do you have a question, uh, Divine? One more, Divine. Yes, how are you, Professor? I'm, we, fi I'm, I'm fine, Divine, thank you. How are you? Yeah, Pila. We, we didn't <laughs> finish the other place. You were in a ZANU-PF platform that is run by CIOs. They would shut people down. Of course, I tried to... Divine? Divine? All right, Divine. let me go to the question. All right, it's thank you. On, on, on Section 2, Subsection 2, Professor, uh, it states clearly uh, that... The, the intent for Chabangu hasn't been questioned. If it's obviously tribalistic or regionalistic, then everything is held to, the, to that account. I want you to comment on that. Thank you. Uh, I, didn't, I, I, I didn't hear the part, the, the, the initial part, section two, section two of what? I, I didn't hear that part. I heard the last part. Divine, uh, did you hear what the professor said? Could you repeat that? Which section are you talking about? Or repeat your question in general, please. Divine, are you still yes, there? Yes, I'm back. Sorry, I couldn't hear you. So we have uh, the, the, the constitution, our supreme constitution is the law of Zimbabwe. And any law, practice, custom, conduct, inconsistent with it is invalid uh, to the extent of the inconsistency. And the obligation is upon, imposed by the Constitution are binding on every person, natural or juristic, including the state and all executive, legislative, and judicial institutions and agencies. And this is our Constitution, um, Section 2, Subsection 2. So the, the question being that the conduct of Chabango obviously is tribalistic, and it might be construed as that, and it should be challenged, and I think there could be a vehicle to be used to challenge it. I want you to comment on that premise, since I haven't heard you talk about this, uh, this clause. Thank you, Professor. I, uh, th thank you, uh, Devan. I, I don't talk about anything that uh, has no practical import or is not in front of me. You have uh, put the question now, it's in front of me, and to the extent I understand it, I don't see what it has to do with the judgment in any way whatsoever. I'm aware, as uh, uh, the other colleagues, that the judgment doesn't deal with anything related to Section uh, 2. Uh, of the Constitution, namely the supremacy of the Constitution. Uh, I'm not aware of uh, uh, an allegation by the applicants uh, in the applic this matter that we are discussing, whose judgment was handed down today, alleging that there has been any conduct by Chabango of a tribal nature, none whatsoever, and uh, given the language which uh, was found to be improper, highly improper, is by the respondents, especially the presiding officers of parliament, but also by the judge, uh, which language uh, 
prompted uh, uh, Advocate Nlovo on behalf of uh, the applicants to apologize to the respondents and to the court. I think it is outrageous and reasonable that you can make such an allegation yourself. If you have your own issue with uh, Tabang, you know, I'm sure, how to raise it. But for you to raise it in the context of this case, when no one has raised it, uh, and then to ask me and uh, allege that I have uh, not spoken about it is grossly unfair. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Professor, for responding to that. Uh, let's go to Blessing, and then I see Chengeta, you've uh, rejoined us. Uh, Blessing, please come through. Blessing, are you there? Please unmute your mic. Thank you very much, Salan. Uh, and uh, I would want to appreciate also uh, Professor uh, Jonathan Moyo for coming on this space. Uh, I just want to make just a few comments before I, I, I present my question, Salan, if you allow me. Uh, I, I just want to appreciate that uh, uh, these discussions, they are helping us to, to account our politicians, to account our leaders or our presumed leaders. Uh, it, I, I think it's very fundamental that uh, we have courageous people who come and talk about these things openly uh, to to try by all means to rebuild our country and also to bring accountability in terms of how uh, our constitution uh, prescribes where we have a government and uh, an opposition or opposition parties and their role in society in terms of trying to change the lives or the basic lives of uh, citizens. Uh, I, I think uh, I've seen quite a lot of your highlights in most of the tweets that you have been sending. Of course, some of, sometimes, I, I want to acknowledge sometimes I was a bit uh, 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 suspicious about uh, your position, but uh, I came to a, a point where I started to understand that uh, some of the things, uh, uh, they are of uh, a, a very fundamental uh, principle in terms of how we, we, we bring consciousness to our, to our people and also how we bring uh, a political awareness to, 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 to support us of any political but whether in ZANU-PF, whether in CC, because these are things that have uh, really derailed our country and also condemned our country to a failed state. Um, one thing I just wanted to ask you is, um, in this case, and uh, with this scenario, uh, how do you think we move on in terms of uh, uh, setting up a stage whereby uh, these two political parties, they understand that uh, they are not at war, but uh, they are there to serve the people. They are there to have objective uh, conversations even where they disagree, where they look for consensus to dialogue, and also for a consensus to serve the interests of our constitution and this, to serve the interests of our people. Because some of the things that you have brought in the public domain, uh, some of us, we, we, we were already aware of most of these uh, challenges and these problems, which uh, we have also been highlighting uh, in the private uh, circles within our leadership. But the reality of the matter is that sometimes you, there's no way you can keep something and contain it when you are not solving it. The only way you can contain a challenge and a problem is by solving it, confronting it, and acknowledging its, 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 its respondents. So I, I just want you to help us here and uh, because at the end of the day, we need a, a government, we need an opposition party or opposition parties that will definitely account the government, that will account the civil service. These are very basic fundamentals that are needed in any constitutional state. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, 
Yes. Uh, um, may I go ahead, uh, Salani? Oh, no, I was just saying, uh, please go ahead. Okay, thank you. Uh, thank you, Blessing, uh, for that uh, intervention, which I think uh, uh, I, I found, uh, I found uh, very substantive, uh, reflective, um, and uh, meaningful. Um, it's the kind of uh, intervention uh, that uh, leaves me uh, settled in the feeling that a right question or concern or issue has been put on the table. Uh, when I was an undergraduate, uh, I was introduced uh, by, you know, we were required to write to, to take uh, general education, general higher education requirements, and you know take courses all over, and one of the courses uh, uh, I took was uh, composition writing. This is not uh, my explanation for the essays that you know we so we were taught how to do composition, but that co course introduced us to a book that I have used to this day, and it's called Asking the Right Questions. And you know, um, uh, sometimes in these situations, it's more important to frame the question appropriately, to ask the right question than to give the right answer, because the right answer may not present itself immediately and when, sometimes when it does, it does not do so with the fullness or uh, completeness that is required. And 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 yes, uh, blessing. Uh, it is in the national interest for uh, state politics in our country to be well-grounded, solid foundation that does not threaten anyone or that does not leave the gladiators, the protagonists in the political formations feeling threatened by one another, their survival like existentially threatened, and certainly one that does not uh, a disorient and alarms and uh, creates disharmony in the body politic. We ought to be in a position where, by and large, and by by and large, I mean like 99.9% .9 people go to bed even uh, in an election, not afraid that if that party wins, we are gone. If that leader becomes this, they will, you know, cut off our necks and so forth. We need that. And it is actually important for our country not to be in this mode of a permanent friction uh, as if every day is an election day or even worse than an election day every, you know is a war zone uh, and it should not be difficult to do that and yet it has been elusive for us um, one of the things I'm myself very clear about I believe I'm very clear about this, uh, with good reason, is that a perplexing question for me, which is 43 years old, is why is it that a landlocked country like ours 
which is small in size, geographic, territorial size, which doesn't have access to the ocean. And whose population is small relative to others, including our neighbors. Why has this country attracted the kind of geopolitical interest from Western powers, which interest has expressed itself in various ways that whose impact has been to divide and cause disunity in our country. Why are Americans so interested in such a small African country in Southern Africa to the point of getting their bicameral congress there are two houses of equivalent to what we call parliament their legislature why has it been possible for the legislature of a country that has been seen throughout the last century and has been wobbling into this current century, more or less in the same status, as a superpower. And which for some time, since 1989 to recently, has been seen as the sole, only superpower. Why has that country found it necessary to make a law on Zimbabwe? Why? There are some compatriots who say this has been because they are very interested in democracy and good governance and human rights. And they think that the government in Zimbabwe or the ruling party in Zimbabwe has been hostile to good governance, human rights, democracy. But you don't have to be a malcontent to realize that this is outrageous because uh, you just look at things happening elsewhere. You know, just look at how many local authorities have been murdered in cold blood in South Africa in KZN. And imagine that happening in Zimbabwe. It's very difficult to run a number of local authorities in South, South Africa. KZN is a, a terrible example, but it, you, it, it is widespread. They, they shoot uh, to kill local uh, 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 councillors. But no one blames the ANC in the way ZANU-PF gets blamed for some of the things that happen in our country. And one need not defend those things. And when one makes a comparison, it is not to justify anything. But it is to ask the question, why does that superpower make a law? A law which has survived uh, for 22 years now. And which they extend every year. There's a general view in social sciences that anything which lasts, and, and, and anything social, which lasts for 10 years, I mean, uh, 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 or put it differently, a thing that uh, is useful, important, actually lasts for 10 years, and after 10 years, something else must come up. 
but two decades. Because if you don't achieve what you want in 10 years, give it up, guy. Come up with something, especially if you are a superpower, something else. But if you stick to it for two, 10, 20 years, but it's now 22 years, and for a small country, a country that doesn't have nuclear weapons, doesn't threaten regional peace, global peace, you have a law. You don't have a similar law on Saudi Arabia. You actually have uh, billions and billions of business deals with Saudi Arabia. Even if they slaughter a, a journalist in a foreign country who is based in your country and cut him into pieces like they are in a, 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 a butchery. They use that butcher's uh, knife. It's okay. You are not going to make that kind of a law. But you will make about this small country. I have genuinely asked myself, uh, for quite a while when I was in government, especially the early years uh, of uh, uh, the difficult times, in, you know, uh, I genuinely believed, you know, there was the Lagos uh, thing, which where the British uh, government was saying, uh, it's the, the problem in Zimbabwe is a, a governance problem. And then we were telling them, oh, no, it's a land uh, pro a problem because uh, land reform, the reclamation of uh, land from your, uh, uh, your people uh, and giving it to our people, we're saying this. Uh, but, but 22 years later, sitting where I am, and I'm constantly exercised by this question, I, I'm, I'm no longer sure that it's the land issue either, although they continue to make it appear like that, because if you look at the amendment they did to Zedera in uh, 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 2018, it was now saying they will not let go to amend, well, if, I mean, rather to repeal that law until if we do good with these other things, we must get... The, we must implement the decisions of the land tribunal that was uh, disbanded. So the thing went, but they say they'd made decisions against you, you must implement that. And so when that happens, they jolt you into, yeah, I think it's, 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 it's land. But in, 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 on, when all is said and done, you just think, what is this? Why is this a concern? Because it impacts on so many things. When, and, and it impacts on people who want to come and do business in Zimbabwe. They say, but it can't be the right country if the Americans have a law against it. Uh, it impacts on Zimbabweans because it gives some of our compatriots the idea that if there's this law, and since America is big brother, is the policeman of the world, blah, 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 if I align my politics and my party with it, maybe they will say, yeah, you are the kind of guy we want. They will work with me and they will assist me, assist my party, give us money. It is a destabilizer that, that, that is there like an ISO. It is the elephant in the room. And then... The third issue is, because the, the Zimbabwean uh, other compatriots know that, it becomes difficult for us to have cash talk among ourselves. Cash talk that addresses precisely the important questions you raise blessing. Could it's about our country, we should uh, be relaxed, and not go over the top about our differences, which should be ideological and policy differences, but not existential differences, which is what we have. Because when compatriots link up with that guy who is the elephant in the room, and then people start denying, even though we can see this guy, he has a law against us. He starts mobilizing even our neighbors. 
First, we will add, uh, over, uh, mobilize those who are in our country. And when there is a small little thing, he will issue a statement that goes global, that we are disturbed about what is happening there and so forth. He's not disturbed about uh, genocidal things taking place somewhere. But, you know, they will not hesitate. Boom, 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 boom. He has not issued a statement that is dis di is disturbed by the murder of those uh, councillors. That is endless there. When I last checked in case 10, it was 20. But he's disturbed about everything that happens. We must strive to be a good society. Conflict-free, violence-free, respecting the fundamental freedoms and rights that are enshrined in our constitution. We must commit ourselves to doing that. But we will still remain human beings and there will be problems. There will be tough days, tough nights. But if when we have a tough night, someone who is a superpower issues a statement and threatens what, what, even our capacity to deal with those problems will be diminished. Now, they will say, we, as when, when we, the thing started blessing, we're telling them, we want to unite Zimbabweans. And we're telling them, we are among the founders of the regional community, SADC. We want it to succeed. And, and they were then saying, okay, so they will go to Sadiq and say, we are giving you money for this regional problem, or rather project or program, but if you have Zimbabwe in it, we will take the money away. So that the region should say, ah, we want this money, and since we don't have it, can a Zimbabwe uh, in participation, let's to hell with Zimbabwe. And then when they see that not working, they do things, they say, they, uh, you know, people keep telling all sorts of uh, um, fictional stories about the impact of something. So, oh, they didn't, in fact, impact original, I mean, uh, ordinary people, what, what. But we know they do, we know. It's no longer a debate. And there is a solid academic literature, not propaganda from ZANU-PF, but academic literature from American academics, UK academics, South African academics, let alone Zimbabweans, which show the impact of sanctions to be, uh, on ordinary people and they show beyond reasonable doubt. But they like that, then they say, ah, very good, because one of the impacts of this is to make life difficult for business people, forget for a moment the government and say, oh, maybe it deserves it or what, what, you know, why don't you do better? But uh, other players who want to do all sorts of things, they find that they can do and it just raises the cost of doing business in Zimbabwe comparing to that. I'm talking about for the other players in the economy. And then what does it do? It causes an influx. So people start leaving borders and so forth. And they want the narrative to say this influx will get worse as long as you don't deal with this political issue, that political issue. Which country anywhere in the world can function properly within those strictures? You don't have to hold some brief or even have a grudge against anyone to understand that actually, let's think twice about this. Isn't this the one issue about which we should have a meeting of minds, a common purpose at the national level, especially blessing for political parties? Why is it that there are some political parties which see an advantage in the position of this superpower. I can assure you to conclude on this. Professor? 
Uh, sorry, Professor, uh, we couldn't hear you. Can you, if you can hear me, please unmute your mic. Sorry, guys, am I the only one who couldn't hear him? I, I can't hear him either. All right. Um, can I kindly ask uh, to, uh, to Nozi, uh, please uh, just uh, handle the space for a back. bit. Yeah, I'm going to sort that out. Uh, Nozi, who's that uh, speaking? George, could you mute it's your George, mic? Yeah. yeah, can you mute your mic? We're sorting it out. Uh, okay, if you could just call him back, it might work. Could you what? Call him no back. George. Yes. Can you hear me? Yes, I can. All right. I'm the host of the space. I've got co hosts to assist me. I don't need your help. Can you mute your yeah, mic while. Sorry. Thank you. Nozi, can you assist me there whilst I call the professor? Thank you. Okay. Um, all right. Good evening, everyone. Um, uh, Takawira, please, if you can assist me, who was um, due to talk uh, after the the professor? Um, I think Wushe has been raising his hand for long. Then maybe we'll go to Chenge. Okay. Chenge time. Because I can see Wushe's hand now. Yeah, so let's we should let's hear your submission and then we'll move uh, to Chengetai while we wait for Prof to come back. You know, I would have loved to get uh, Prof's uh, response, uh, given what he has, what he took us through, really, which really didn't need um, a lot a lot of analysis to understand what that what that judgment was. But what I really wanted to read to him really was that um, the president of C of the CCC has responded to that judgment um, <clears throat> he has responded and I wanted to read it and, and, and hear people well, what his response would have been this is what yeah, he says please, please carry on and read it he will make a way your ears shall hear a word behind you saying this is the way walk in it <laughs> sorry, sorry sorry professor hello oh, uh, 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 hello okay we should yeah. We'll mute for now. Stephanie, over to you. Uh, thank you. Uh, Professor, thank you for coming back. I think uh, Vushe was reading something, a response. Uh, Vushe, if you could start again. All right. Uh, I I'm reading the response from the president of the CCC, given the judgment that we had today. He says, he will make a way. Your ears shall hear a word behind you saying this is the way. Walk in it. Whenever you turn to the right hand or, or whenever you turn to the left, Isaiah 30, verse 21. There is power in being led by the Lord in totality. God's, hashtag God's in it. That is the official response by the church champion today, given what has happened. Now, <clears throat> I do not know what that means. I don't know if someone can interpret to me what leadership that is, why, or what. Perhaps we are missing something, and there's, uh, there's something we are missing. But given the judgment of today and these implications, that is, that is what we have from the uh, CC leadership. I don't know what the professor's response to that is. Professor, please respond if you if you heard um, what Vushe was saying over there. Um, my response is that um, I I saw a post earlier um, in uh, by. Um, uh, CCC, uh, I think uh, it was done in the afternoon, and it said, we have received the judgment of the High Court, and our lawyers are still studying it. We will provide a comprehensive statement regarding the same. We want to reiterate that Chabang is not a member of CCC, and the party CCC, which is led by President Nelson Chamisa, has not initiated any recall of a member of parliament or senate. I think this is a much more well-considered uh, judgment, I mean, sorry, a, a statement uh, which is referring to lawyers. Uh, and uh, one hopes that they have good lawyers. We have to advise them about uh, the meaning of the judgment and its implications. Uh, the, the thing that uh, you just read, uh, we have come to be accustomed to those verses, and um, it's not for me to comment on that, on, on a verse. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Fushe. Uh, Chengeta, you were up next. Apologies. I was just looking for Professor there. Uh, but Chengeta, please come through. 
Well, uh, thank you very much, Salani. Uh, and as usual, an amazing job you've, you've, you've done here. Uh, and I know that a lot happens uh, behind the scenes uh, where, where you get to pull off something like this. And it's a really exciting uh, discourse that we're having here. It's a superb presentation, Prof Moyo. Uh, that, that, that was brilliant. Uh, I'm sure you can even see with the comments uh, from, from the uh, comment section. But uh, going into the issue of the day, I think uh, it would be not good for anyone, uh, I mean, I speak for myself, to uh, you know, add more to what the prof has already said, because I think it's as clear as can be. But uh, we, we, I feel that this situation could have been avoided and it, 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 this should this could have been done by a simple one page letter uh, introducing uh, the triple CMPs and the assigning mandates the constitution to parliament this could have been avoided but who knows why that uh, you know slipped through the hands of uh, our political cousins in the triple C and our position and I remember very well when we were discussing the, the court application. Uh, it was, it was uh, Senator Monzora. And I quote, he said that it was a badly prepared application. And we went even further to offer free advice. And one of the things that we talked about was um, the, there was a possibility of a jointer. There was also the issue of deposing affidavits uh, by, by uh, Nelson Chamisa, uh, uh, President Nelson Chamisa, President of the Triple C and also the triple C itself. This could have been done to try and uh, help to assist uh, the MPs because they were left vulnerable. And the judgment uh, has vindicated that position. And you know, when Senator Monzero was talking about this, uh, the comments were like, no, no, Dagi, Watumane Zanu, and this and that, leave us alone. But guess what? Here we are. Now this development, and I, I mean the judgment, uh, is a serious one that has um, far-reaching consequences beyond the triple C. Uh, this will have serious, a serious bearing, definitely, on, on our uh, uh, political landscape in the country. Perhaps it was meant to happen, perhaps not. Perhaps it is about time that we reconsider uh, our socio-political discourse a lot more energy is being spent on ritual at the expense of reason and facts. But maybe as I, as I learned, more importantly, perhaps it's about time that um, our political cousins in the Triple C consider rational disputation or AKA dialogue to try and mitigate the situation because a lot is going to happen. In, 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 um, uh, in the next few weeks, maybe even months, uh, that is going to significantly... Uh, look, this is an issue that is not just going to affect the triple C, uh, as I've already submitted. It, it is definitely going to have a serious bearing on our democracy uh, and our, on our political landscape uh, at large. And I think it's about time, uh, you know, they could possibly consider... Uh, such kind of moves to try and mitigate the situation and try to, you know, swallow those egos. Uh, concede whenever we, we do something wrong, I'm talking umbrella as, as the opposition, because you know what, we, we have used this tactic, and I think it's becoming very new sitting, for lack of a better word, excuse the, 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 the word I used, that you know, we, we in the opposition, we use uh, the accusation of Anyone who differs with you to be associated with the ZANU PF, it, 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 it is a weapon of choice. And I think it has been overused. And if we continue to do that in the opposition, I, 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 I repeat again, uh, it would be our biggest undoing. It's about time that we should concede certain mistakes because this issue of observing uh, 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 laws or constitutions is something that keeps popping up all through the course of our history as the opposition. You remember um, uh, 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 Welshman Nure, he left the MDC around the same issue. Uh, the same thing again uh, with Tendai Biti, exactly the same thing. 
and more recently, and Prof did justice to it. He talked about uh, my brother, President Nelson Chamisa, President of, MD, uh, of the Triple C, um, refusing to acknowledge or to follow or to abide by the judgment that came from the Supreme Court, which directed us at that time, he was the president, to convene an extraordinary Congress. He, the court referred us back to our constitution. They referred us to section 9.21.1 of the constitution of the MDC. That in the event of the death of our president, the late Morgan Changirai, we were supposed to have convened uh, an extraordinary Congress. That was thrown out through the window. And I think, look, it has followed them again as, uh, as they continue to exist outside the MDC. But the very same thing again, that's why we called it in the MDC. We called it uh, 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 um, um, an ideological rapture because we differed in what we then believed. Because the MDC was formed by three broad movements. I'm closing my, my submission. Three broad mov movements. Uh, the one was the constitutional movement, uh, the student movement, and the labor movement. And we saw a very serious and radical shift away from the constitutional movement, which actually formed the greater base of our movement. And the, the very thing that we've always had issues with Zanu the, 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 having no respect for the rule of law and so on and so forth, I could go on and on. But we actually played into the very things that we were going against. I, I, I think this should be a lesson for us, uh, not just for those in the Triple C. It's a sad moment, but we should take lessons uh, uh, from it and, and be better people. Thank you for, for, for the opportunity, Salani, and, and uh, thank you, audience, as well. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, Professor, do you, do you have any comments uh, towards uh, the, what uh, Chengetai said? No, just to thank Chengetai for uh, the uh, comments. His comments, uh, I, I think they are well taken and well appreciated. Thank you. Oh, th thank you very much. Uh, right, uh, let's see. Uh, Professor, first of all, I want to let you know, uh, three hours, the Mampotara Zakwana. But obviously, uh, can you spare us a bit more time so I can just get through the speakers? Professor? All you right, uh, all right, Salam. Okay. Uh, yeah, to um, everybody who's listening, Professor uh, uh, Jonathan Moy did mention that uh, he'd give us uh, three uh, hours. Uh, so uh, if I'm not mistaken, Takawira, three hours is up for Zakwana, did it? So, um, mm. yeah, so what we don't want to do is to take advantage, um, obviously. And so what we'll do is uh, with the people that are on the speakers, if we could finish up with them. And of course, there will be other times when we can converse and so forth. Uh, I think that's all we can do for now. Uh, so uh, please, uh, let's go to, uh, sorry, I can see the hands are up, but just one second. Uh, let's go to Seka. My brother, I'm a Zimbabwean. Please come through. Thank you. Hi, Salani. Great space. Hi, Professor. <laughs> Thank you, thank you. It's good to be Zimbabwean and to converse. Uh, oh, brilliant, um, brilliant analysis there, Professor. But Nazim Fungute as Kulumesagitila in Dabalengwangi Kangil from O Gibson from MTC A to Z. So Kanga Pelangazati, the Matabeleland issue is the, when I look at it, because I remember I once in uh, my cry to CCC new baby was I hope you won't double candidate in Bulawayo again or in Matepeleland. And the issue of how Matepeleland interacts won't be abused like when in the MTC when, uh, you know, the figure source vary. They get our MPs and, and then they disappear there and we never see them in Matepeleland. And then this crops up again. I mean, I was given short shrift. This is my own personal from my table. And broadly speaking, even when I look at it, even in Zanu PF, the multiple issue questions cutting, I mean, Zanu handles it a little bit better. So, how can this issue be settled? Because, uh, I mean, I find it ludicrous that uh, we can reach this uh, situation whereby of the recall again. 
you know, oh, oh, I, I, I see, I, I, I see. When I look at it, I'm looking basically to say this is the same issue that has dogged the opposition from its founding, from the very beginning, from the original MTC, including to all the other letters of the alphabet. Now, including into the new baby, it's exasperating. Can you give me comment on that one, uh, Professor? Thank you very much. Over to you, Professor. Uh, uh, thank you, uh, and thank you for uh, the intervention. I, I, I think this is really uh, more, uh, we have moved uh, away from the judgment to the politics. And I think that uh, to the extent that the political issue that you spotlight uh a, is a, an important agent historic one and is not happening for the first time as you say it behooves the opposition to come to terms with that issue and uh, get a grip uh and um i don't think that this is uh, something which um uh, I, I note and acknowledge it as a very important issue, and you, you have framed it clearly, but uh, I, I don't have a solution to that issue, except to acknowledge it as one that requires a, a honest a introspection by the opposition. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Professor. Uh, to those who will be asking questions, as you can see, we're about to uh, round up. Uh, so can we allow a situation where I, I do understand that you've got compliments to offer, Professor? I would also like, you know, if you use the, his timeline, you know, I think uh, that will go a long way. <laughs> I do understand that you want to appreciate him on the space, but please do it briefly. Uh, just go to your question and he'll, he'll come with a response. Can we hear from Tandazani, please? Tandazani, you can unmute your mic, my brother. I saw your emojis. Yes, 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 Salani. Uh, 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 thank you so much for the opportunity. And a very good evening to, to the professor himself. A very good evening to everyone else in the space. And um, special thanks to Salani for hosting such um, a very wonderful space. Now, here's the thing that I think we are constantly... Uh, 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 um, losing the battle. Now, looking at um, the, the, fu the fundamental mistake was to dismiss Chabang. Dismissing Chabang and calling him a ZANU PF project and thinking that you are done with the whole quagmire that you are facing was the very fundamental mistake. Because right now, Chabang is the authority. And the, and the authority is seemingly coming from the courts now. And Chabang can actually begin to recall more people, which will be very uh, uh, catastrophic for the opposition. But I think the people of Zimbabwe themselves can now see that there is a lack of leadership, or should I call it gross incompetence, in terms of coming up with a solid movement that is there to represent the, the, the wills of the people of Zimbabwe. Because at the moment, it is clear that Triple C has failed to stand its ground against the storms that comes with it. Because when you are forming a, 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 an opposition political outfit against the, the mighty ZANU-PF, you might want to call it a little political party for your own risk, but it's a mighty political movement that needs someone to really strategize in terms of coming up with a movement that will stand against ZANU-PF. Actually, Professor has uh, analyzed this thing very well, and I agree with him almost everything that he said, that um, we actually need an alternative movement at the moment in Zimbabwe, because it's clear that we don't have an opposition it's clear that we cannot actually uh, uh, say we are we are able to stand against ZANU PF or we are able to organize a movement that is structureless, that is constitutionless, that is manifestoless. It does not work in Zimbabwean politics. You cannot come up with such a strategy and expect to win 
against Zanu PF. However, I, I, I have actually a lot to say, but um, I'd love to ask Professor an honest question because this question actually, when I came up here, yeah, many of my guys are, are, are actually sending it even on my inbox to say, please, since you have got an opportunity, can you ask this to, 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 to the Professor? And I, I, I was expecting someone to ask it. Maybe people have asked it because I, I, I actually I was out, but I'm back now. Here's the question, uh, my professor. The question says, you uh, and, and, and other big wings in the triple C are the ones that are working with Chabang. So, so are you in any way, you know, uh, affiliated or are you in any way implicated <laughs> to, to Chabang? Oh, yeah, yeah. Dazani. First and foremost, that doesn't sound like a question. It sounds more like an accusation. So uh, uh, there's no need for him to answer that question. And uh, I, I, we, if there's another question, Irina, yes, but that's not, that's not a question. That's an accusation. So we will not be doing that here. So uh, is there any other question? Inemsoro, Yonga Vunza, besides the Sunjaga Pusoda. I uh, know nothing, nothing. So if that one cannot be asked, that's, that's okay. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, and whoever asked my brother to ask that question, it's, I know it's not you, Tandazani, whoever it is. <laughs> yeah, there we don't do that here. Uh, let's Thank you, Tandazani. Uh, let's go to the next speaker, please. Amos, uh, please come through. Ah, thank you, Bess Salam. Thank you so much. And uh, to Professor Jonathan Moyo, I, it's a pleasure to have you on the space. And... Um, just uh, giving us uh, this presentation, we really appreciate. Um, my question, Professor, without wasting your time, I know you have already gone past your your allocated period. Um, I'm just thinking, um, considering what is happening now in our electoral spaces and the parliament and the courts, um, do you think uh, that this could be a, a good time to reflect? I know laws um, are, are, are always, um, you know, twigged and, and um, reviewed to respond to current situations. What is your take in terms of what is going on now in relation to parties going into parliament without constitutions and clear structures, just so we can protect uh, the you know, the, the dignity of our electoral process, the dignity of our country. Do you think the country and our MPs, the members of parliament should consider uh, formulating maybe a law that could uh, maybe respond to this situation and say, we don't need people coming into parliament on a party card, a card when the party doesn't have a constitution and clear uh, uh, clear structures so as to protect the people we have voted, to protect the dignity of our parliament, our courts, and our electoral processes. Thank you so much, Professor. I'll listen from the stands. No problem, Amos. Uh, go ahead, Professor. Uh, thank you very much, and uh, thank you, Amos, for your uh, intervention and sharing your views. And uh, for asking, I think, a, a pertinent uh, question whose uh, attention in our country is uh, long overdue, I, I think there's now a national consensus that uh, Zimbabwe must be like the rest of the world, starting with um, our immediate neighborhood in, within Sadiq, the countries that border or we share a border with, the continent, and frankly, the whole world. We certainly are in our region the only country that does not register political parties. There is no reason uh, why we don't do so. Uh, it is detrimental to our national interest. There is no doubt that if we had that law, as does South Africa, Zambia, Botswana, and so forth, this particular issue we are discussing this, uh, uh, I don't know, I was about to say this evening, but um, uh, today, here and now, uh, we would not be discussing it. It would not have happened. So it would be unfortunate 
if this 10th parliament does not come up with a, a law to register political parties because that law uh, we would not if when or if we should come up with such a law we would not reinvent the wheel uh, it would stand to reason that among uh, its key or essential features would be that uh, for a party to be registered, it should um, have a constitution, have office bearers, and um, a, meet certain uh, national uh, uh, criteria. And um, I would be very surprised and I would add disappointed if this 10th parliament doesn't come up with such a law. Thank you. Thank you so much, Professor. Right, let's go straight away to draw a line. Uh, and please, let's keep it brief, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Many thanks. Draw a line. Can you hear me? Are you there? Right. Um, if uh, I, I mention your you. name and I get response, uh, oh, there yeah. you are. <laughs> can you hear me? Can you yes, hear? I can. I name Puzwangungori Mwecheta and Nagawandi. Professor say um my western countries as as circuita gave up in a situation in Zimbabwe. Uh you was a professor very ready to answer on either side. Ko you an inquiry pakutonga wati now. Ne situation in ku nika edwi. Why war kusiruku skaopako analyzer? The politics is a very flat terrain. Don't put one with it. Thank you. The question because I, unfortunately I didn't. Uh, do you need him to ask again, uh, Professor? Or are we diverting from the topic? Uh, thank you. I mean, uh, I, I, you know, the question: uh, uh, Why shouldn't uh, the ruling uh, uh, elite uh, create whatever is referring uh, to as something flat and so forth? I think we discussed uh, earlier. Clearly, there has to be some engagement uh, within uh, the country, the political players, and so forth. But we should have uh, an understanding as to why. That engagement has not been possible uh, 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 to the extent desirable, and I proffered an explanation uh, earlier, and I stand uh, with that by that explanation. Well, thank you so much. Uh, thank you for that response. Uh, let's go straight away to uh, I see Tapiwa. You're with us, Tapiwa. Please come through. Tapiwa. Right. If uh, sorry, you may not be <laughs> near your phones or your devices. Tapiwa, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, can you hear me? Sorry about that. Okay, come through, please. Okay. So my 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 question for for Professor is, it's now almost predictable which way things will go because if you look at historically how these guys make decisions, uh, talking about opposition, uh, they don't really take any advice from the outside and. And uh, is it now obvious that if from here going forward, it's, it's, it's just downhill for them? And then my other question is, outside of this, 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 this court situation that we have, why is it the opposition has brought no other issues? They've, they've lob lobbied for nothing else, no other ideas have been brought forward, and nothing else has been pushed. Have, have they just been waiting to focus on this only? Is this the, the entire game? Because even when they walked into parliament, outside of the Chabang fight, they have brought no new ideas or new new policies that have been proposed. So, are we saying that they actually have nothing else besides fighting for positions? And I think if we, if, like I'm saying, uh, from this on, from this time on, is it predictable already with the way they are reacting? We know how where the way they their thinking lies. So it means that they're just going to be weakened and weakened going forward. Would you have the same thoughts? Please go ahead, Professor. Thank you. Well, that was uh, from Tapiwa. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Okay. okay. Thank you uh, for, for, for that. Um, I think Tapiwa's first uh, uh, intervention was uh, to share his own view 
uh, uh, he asked a question and answered it. You know, like where where are things going? Uh, where do we go from here? Uh, uh, and it was like, where will Triple C go from here? And if I understood him, he's saying it's a down downhill proposition. Uh, uh, but then the, the second question was more about why does it appear like there is a narrow agenda, uh, maybe even a single issue agenda at a time. Um, I recall at the uh, start of uh, the election campaign for the 2023 harmonized general election, uh, I was asked by Sophie Mokwen of uh, a, a SABC what I thought about the state of the opposition in Zimbabwe going into the election. And my humble opinion was to say, uh, if looking at uh, some factors that have shaped state politics in our country, um, especially over the last 23 years, but if one wants uh, over the last 43 years, this, comparatively speaking, is the weakest opposition that Zimbabwe has had at the level of ideas, at the level of ideology, at the level of policy. This is the one opposition that has not taken the ruling party on, that is ZANU-PF, uh, on that front. And if colleagues recall, uh, last year, after the uh, uh, Triple C was formed, or, or, or let's say was unveiled on the 24th of January 2022, the first public uh, uh, rally was on, on the 20th of February 2022 at Zimbabwe grounds. And notably, Nelson Chamisa said, um, we have, we have, we have not, uh, I have not said anything and we have not uh, thought about ideology, constitution, policy, uh, things like that. Uh, we are still consulting. Uh, that thing, oh, those words, remain true to today. You... Uh, uh, you look at Triple C and how things have unfolded. It has not been about a contestation of uh, ideology, ideas, or policy. But we know from the experience we've had with the opposition in Zimbabwe that uh, from 1999 and into the 20, uh, 2000 election, there was quite a contestation on those things, uh, grounds. And that what distinguishes this opposition from the previous ones, even within uh, the parameters of the MDC, even as they don't want to be connected with the MDC, although we know the, the connection is inextricable, uh, it can't be done away with. Uh, you can't define this position, this opposition, as an idea-based, ideological-based, or a policy-based opposition, where the ideas are articulated at various platforms, and there's a debate with the ruling party over those ideas. Um, we have had a, a better a better show through our history, um, starting with 1980 when you had uh, PF Zappo and so forth, it was very solid on ideas, on ideology and, 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 and concepts. We have had uh, an opposition of selfies, uh, even by the few, uh, the, 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 there's been a very narrow uh, leadership. Uh, you know, you can name them uh, uh, on, um, uh, or count them if you want. On, on, on your, your, your one, the palm of your hand, say there is Tamisa, one, there is Ostalos, two, there is Mayere, three, there's Chibaya, four, um, 
I'm even struggling now. Um, there might be one or two others. We have never had a, 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 an opposition like that in Zimbabwe, where others can talk, where the president uh, campaigns alone, uh, where uh, there is no uh, idea or basis or, or continuous a policy research team and so forth like Morgan Sangra used to have, you know. And and to show that uh, some of the teams that uh, Morgan Sangra had who were working on his policy sector, some of them right now, of those, they, one, they, they are still very young, most of them. Two, they are working at high-level policy places. Some are even uh, with uh, in international NGOs. Some are with um, the embassies. Uh, I know Charles Mangongera, for example. We, we used to have, you know, running uh, battles with him. Uh, is there We're at the American embassy uh, doing policy work for the embassy when he could be doing work for these guys? These guys are conspicuous for not being idea-based. They like uh, using uh, cliches. Um, they, uh, 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 they ignore experience which they have within their ranks. They have stigmatized them. Um, if you are in opposition and you are reduced to slogans and cliches and you are given to this kind of uh, a d discourse, of uh, always uh, shouting at uh, your opponents. You should, uh, the opposition, more than the ruling party, uh, one would argue, uh, needs to be distinguished or to distinguish itself by the power of the ideas that they propagate and to show uh, that these ideas are superior. There is a colleague who earlier on the platform uh, raised the, the, this uh, issue, uh, or at least was commenting on something uh, related to this issue, um, and so Tapua, if, if there is no contestation of ideas, there is no relevant opposition in any society if you find that in that society there's no contestation of ideas you know that you have a weak opposition uh, you can't have a strong and relevant opposition which has one leader which has no team so the colleague who commented earlier asked rhetorically you look at the team that contested the 2023 uh, elections, you ask yourself who could have been the Minister of Finance? Who could have been the Foreign Minister? Uh, uh, it's not so much that then you say, oh, about Uko. Especially when you say Uko, I'm going to knock, I'm going to come here as a knock. Mukate, ah, I'm dead wood, Uko. Ko live wood, Irukopi. Because the only alternative that would be desirable uh, alternative to dead wood, if you say ukukuna dead wood, is live wood. But when people genuinely, without prejudice, without malice, look, they don't see. The failure to engage the rest of society, this kind of opposition at Tinayo right now in Zimbabwe, makes intellectuals afraid of it. Makes people afraid of associating with it. Van Vano Teresa, and say, okay, Okay, fine. Same 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 the best intellectuals. Munungu wira na 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 presidenti mtanga mchungu ita propaganda jet. But kutumite chaiso chaiso basa. Ndewapi, we can accept and understand why wana jonso hii problem. But uh, there is no one else. So, 
Mneshua could the problem ndijo so or there's something else there. I think that there's a lot of introspection that they need to do. Uh, uh, Nini, I have failed to understand why Nelson Chamisa did not, number one, as a priority, consolidate and keep base yaka siro na chamna. Ndiyo patown yaka piwa. Kuti, it's not easy to develop, build a movement, but in these successive years, here is the base. Irako Basa is to make sure you keep it, then make sure you expand it and build it by bringing on Vamovanuwe into this space, Vachiti and Etono Basira. Uh, Chamisa, either because of generational consensus issues or because of issues of faith, or whatever reason. Manjo Ugatanga is number one, Kupaza, your inheritance. Ndiyo inuzo kunetsaka. You can end up saying, ah, is anu PF, what, what, but if truth be told, it's your base because you have. Uh, you have scattered it instead of consolidating it. An opposition leader uh, works to consolidate what they find. Nelson is young. Chum, uh, uh, Tsongrai was uh, more mature, older, and Tsongrai was coming from a trade union base. He was well known internationally in a trade union movement, and through that, uh, and especially once he started. Uh, a full-time opposition politics, he discharged his role in such a way that some heads of state said, Nelson has not shown himself to have any friends who matter in society. He is no, he doesn't have strong people in Besimake, Awaisa Kureuku, and yet Zivo, up in, in the region, beyond the region. But we don't see him with other people of faith. He will quote verses for us and put them on Twitter or X. But we don't see him and Father so-and-so, Father Mkonori, Bishop Mandanga, uh, we don't see that. We don't see him with uh, NGOs. We don't see him uh, with uh, others. He, he doesn't, we don't see him addressing 